All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Open Mic on the Tactical Pineapple. Uh, still getting used to saying that, but hey, I didn't screw it up this time. I think I even got the audio working. So uh, um, if y'all aren't familiar, this is literally uh, our second time talking to this guy, so you should know who he is. If you don't, um, it's Mark from Fit and Fire. Uh, I definitely recommend checking out his YouTube channel. Uh, constantly doing good stuff over there. Um keep calm and carry i don't know how many episodes you're up to now i know you they're a bit sporadic these days but they come in and yeah they in, they're good ones so yeah we're up to 86 i think and 87 will be hopefully everything works out uh should be um see an arsenal i had to think about that one nice nice so uh I just do a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, welcome everybody to the chat tonight. I know there were a couple firsts in here. Uh, the first time in a while that Operator Tony wasn't first, so we can point that out because he feels all kind of butthurt about that. But hey, we appreciate him trying. Uh, apparently, I posted it live uh, to, to public today when he was on the bus. So uh, he's still here. He says he's second. LOL. Uh, he did send me a screenshot earlier to tell me who was first, and it is my favorite name in the chat as of last week with Walloping Sex Yeti. So uh, congratulations to Walloping Sex Yeti for getting first. Um, I believe Charles Sexton was in here earlier. Mario Mechanic Molina was also in here earlier, uh, as well as um, Armaments and Axes was in here. So to everybody who was here early, uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, I hope you make it back so i see walloping sex yeti is in he says audio is good uh yeah tony operator operator tony's actually audio is actually working to start the show tonight I, I clicked it on just before i went over so um we're gonna be trying a couple different things here in the next few weeks but uh we're we're hoping that everything works out well so may lose a couple features may get a couple features but we may have a little bit less of a shit show to start the show um Charles Sexton says they ain't long enough to helicopter. I'm guessing this goes back to a different comment. Uh, yeah, yep. Uh, somebody said, what's up, y'all? And Charles Sexton says, hard or Operator Tony told Charles Sexton, hard dicks and helicopters. So they aren't long enough to helicopter. That's for sure. So we're okay with that, though. <laughs> uh so uh yeah i think that uh, dicky b is also in here thanks for stopping by bud um you know i think everybody here pretty much knows who you are but if you want to give a real quick rundown of what you do what your channel's about and what you're what you're doing over there on fit and fire these days uh let us know yeah i mean i'm, I'm still trying to figure out what i'm doing let us know <laughs> it's trying to tell anybody but uh hey guys if you haven't seen uh of me heard of me whatever my name's Mark. Uh, I am a, um, a veteran. I was in the army for about 11 years, did a couple of different things while I was in, uh, got out and really just was missing, just kind of missing the military and decided that, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to do something a little bit, uh, similar, but at the same time, spread a message at the, to, to as many people as possible. So I started a YouTube channel in 2017 and off it went. Uh, I've been very fortunate to be plugged in uh, with uh, some really great people from the get-go, like uh, Johnny B. And uh, he, he's been really been my mentor for these last three and a half years, uh, helping me out as much as possible. Uh, because of his uh, friendship, I've been able to get in contact with uh, John Patton, and and they've they've been a big help to the channel to to get me where I am today. So um, it's a, it's a community effort, and uh, my channel is not this big. Um, it's just a little over twenty seven thousand uh, without their help. I can tell you that for sure. Um, and so uh, right now, I'm just trying to do uh, gun and gear reviews. Um, I'm looking to change that up a little bit here, hopefully in the latter part of this year, uh, maybe dive into a little bit more educational type of uh, content for firearm owners, um, situational awareness, um, you know, basic firearms instruction. But uh, by and large, the the go-to is, is guns and gear review. Um, the channel is called fit and fire because I have a past passion for fitness. Um, I'm at the J I'm at, if I can even speak, let me take a little bit more drink, uh, of this vodka need, here. Need more vodka. 
her brain function. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, foggy. Um, I have a passion for fitness. I'm at the gym almost every single day. Uh, and uh, I've gotten into a lot of different uh, fitness ventures, uh, to, so to speak. I've gotten into kickboxing, did a kickboxing match. Uh, I've gotten into competitive cycling as well. So, you know, yeah, you know, just Excellent. I'm just all over the place is really what it's all about. <laughs> and having having a blast while I'm doing it. Nice, nice. Operator Tony says, uh, at Fit and Fire, how are you liking your new place? I think you've been in there uh, long it, enough that you should it, be able to speak to it. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. It's uh it's smaller than what I what I had previously, but bigger than uh the apartment that I was in. So um yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. It's it's big enough, I should say. <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely seen, you know, you're doing more of the fitness stuff, especially over on your Instagram. So you can plug that too, if you want to think you're uh fit, uh, fit and fire 78. I may be. Clear. No, it, that's, that's what, that's what it used to be. I changed the name. It should be fit in underscore fire. So perfect. Per perfect. It may be that I, you know, I'm, I'm old school. I remember things like stupid. So. I shouldn't remember some things that I do, and I don't remember half the shit I should. My wife can attest to that. Right. So, <laughs> um, anyways, you know, I just kind of, I, you know, I know this is your second time back with us. Obviously, the first time here, you were literally like I think our third guest, so we were definitely learning what we were doing. Uh, you were just figuring out your setup as well in there. So I, th you know, I, I figured I'd reach out again and see if you wanted to come back on and we'll have another chat, kind of, um. I think everything is in a much different space than it was 26 weeks ago when we did this the first time. Um, yeah. You know, both uh, as far as 2A world is concerned, as far as political world is concerned, um, you know, clown world, however you want to speak of the pol political, you know, divide that's going on right now. But I do kind of want to get your take on a couple things that are going on currently in the gun industry. Uh, well, the gun world uh obviously everybody knows about hr 127 um that shit show of a that's a, bad a bill. um you know i everybody kind of is you know brushes it off as it's not a big deal nobody co-sponsored it it's not going to go anywhere but i think those of us who've been around and long enough know that gun control bills never just disappear Bits and bits and pieces of them are going to be picked and taken to other things, and that's the scariest part of it. I think. Um, Absolutely. The the problem, and, and I, I don't know if you agree. I'm I'm sure you probably will, but the the biggest issue is is that in in politics and and the way they write these bills is that they don't actually go out and write anything. They just grab stuff that's already pre written on other stuff, mingle it all together, and call it a bill. Mm -hmm. Um. And then when they're trying to get something passed through, they pick and choose what they want and throw it on something as a, a bargaining tool. And sometimes things get passed that shouldn't under things that you wouldn't think would be passing that. So now that this is written and the language is out there, I think it's it's something that needs to be paid very close attention to everything that they pass at this point as they're pushing things through because this could very well be, half of this is probably going to be in whatever stimulus package they try to push through right now 1.9 trillion dollars that's all going someplace yep uh most of it's not going to the american people where it should go no no i know that and i, I, mean, I, I, I <laughs> it is it is ridiculous to see in the first week how much money has already left this country uh you know we're, we're literally in the infancy of this this presidency and I mean, we've got this Department of Agriculture guy who just came in, and, and this is lesser known too. Department of Agriculture, uh, new department lead, comes in and literally sends out the largest export of corn and ethanol our country has ever made, and they sent it to China. Yeah. So, I mean, that's yeah. that's a, an idea of where things are headed. <laughs> put us on five dollars a gallon again and send everything to china yeah i mean that that's that's exactly what we're seeing i've already seen gas here uh in my small town in kansas go up uh about 10 cents in the last couple of days and that is up 29 cents in the last couple of weeks yeah we so, are um, we are up 47 crazy cents 
We're up 47 cents since the election, uh, which is less than I thought it was going to be. I, I told the wife, I said, we were going to be over $3 a gallon before the end of the month uh, of January. And what well, we weren't, we're still 70 cents away from that, but... That's a far cry from the dollar sixty seven we were at a year ago. So, yeah, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I got into a conversation with a very close dear personal friend of mine about uh, you know some of the executive orders that have come up with uh, Biden. Uh, the first day being the cancellation of the uh, pipeline deal, and uh, you know the, the the comment was you know, well, I I didn't agree with the pipeline anyway, you know, we need to find better uh, renewable uh, energies. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Everybody agrees with that. That, That's not, that's not something that we're ignoring, but the problem is fossil fuels right now are here to stay. And the, the, um, the pipeline was one of the most efficient ways to transport not only fuel, crude oil, but also natural, natural gas as well. Did it have some problems? Absolutely. Did it leak? Sure. But I think that, that, um, the, the problems outweighed the carbon footprint that is now going to be, that is now going to be had because of all of that natural gas and fuel being transported by truck now. Right. And I think that's, that's that's a huge thing that I think a lot of people miss on all this is that, um, at the end of the day, all that fuel is still getting moved. It's just, you know, everything is getting moved, but now it's going by much more dangerous means for the general public, uh, much more dangerous means for the, the environment. Um, and, and people just go, well, it's not a pipeline. Well, I mean, if you've ever seen a pipeline after it's done, it's actually pretty pristine. These people go through and they take care of the land that's around it because they're obligated to. They have an obligation to do it. But when a oil company is running, you know, 37 trucks every six hours out of a facility, uh, one of those trucks has a leak. They're putting more oil on, on the ground with one truck every six hours than they're putting out of that pipeline every six days. So, yeah. And, and the thing that's the thing that's ironic about it, and I'm going to pull up a picture. I don't know if everybody will be able to see it, but uh, the question is, you know, people are saying, well, pa- pipeline, the, the pipeline from Alaska, Canada, whatever is, is bad. And um, I'm like, OK, cool. Which uh, let's see if I can get it in there. Which pipeline are you talking about? Right. Yeah. There's because just millions, all of there's, those squiggly lines are pipelines. Yeah, there's just <laughs> millions of miles of pipeline in this country. It's it's all just political bargaining is what it really comes down to. And it's, it's, it's union. I I guess the interesting portion of it is that the unions that were literally eliminated through those executive orders were the same unions that were piloting his election. So Mm -hmm. I did see quite a bit of buyer's remorse, uh, over the next week. Um, I will say he has done more to eliminate jobs in the first couple weeks of his presidency than any other president in history so uh, i think i believe he was the first president to sign away seventy thousand jobs ever so i i think he was the first president to reduce employment on his first day right and uh last time i checked i think he was at 42 executive orders in the first 10 days and it's it's interesting that um People talked about how Trump was an authoritarian, you know, that he was fascist, you know, that he was going to rule by an iron hand. But yet, but Biden has already signed more um, executive orders in the first 10 days than than Trump ever did. And so who's the authoritarian? Well, the other side of the argument is like, well, 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 he had to sign these executive orders to to undo the the damage that Trump did. Did. I was like, that's not his, that's not his job. That's the legislature's job. Right. Right. Well, we have the thing, a legislature's yeah. job to write laws and the executive to exact. That's it. Yep. Yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that. And the worst part about it is, is all these executive orders are coming when he has both the house and the Senate. So he has the backing of everybody he needs to get whatever he wants pushed through. And yet everything sure is does. being done by executive order. Now, 
I want everybody to realize this too. These executive orders weren't written or drawn up by the office of the president elect. These were written up and drawn by other people, put on his desk, and he was told sign it. And there's there's actually audio of him saying, "I don't know what this is," and somebody yes. in the background going, "Just sign it, just sign it." And I, I know, right? And and the, what blows my mind even worse. Maybe he was trolling. Maybe he was joking. I don't know. But in that audio, if you play it, you know, 30, sec- 30 seconds longer after he signs it, he hands it off. And I can't confirm it. I haven't personally seen it, but I've been told that he hands it off and says, make sure the president gets this. Yeah. Yep. That Wait, I will say what? Th- that I'm going to say, I'm going to say that that is probably a, a gaffe from somebody who's on the mental decline. Okay. More than anything, he spent eight eight of the last twelve years of his life as the vice president. So everything that he signed had to get onto the president's desk. So mm. handing it off to somebody and saying, "Make sure the president gets this," is probably commonplace. And considering the last year of his life has been extremely stressful, with anybody who's ever had any dealings with somebody who's starting to deal with early or late onset Alzheimer's. Stress induces mental incapacitation. I'm not saying that he is unfit to do the job yet, (laughs) but from what I've seen, he's obviously somebody who is on a mental decline. He's having issues figuring out the common things that, Mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago, he didn't have an issue with. Two years ago, he didn't have an issue with it. So, I mean, people can argue that, oh, he's got uh, uh, he's got a stutter. Well, he didn't have that stutter for the last 46 years he was in office. So Steve Harvey also has a stutter. Um, he worked through it, same as Joe Biden did. Now that he's on mental decline, his stutter is coming back. So I will give you the fact that yeah, maybe and- he did have a stutter early on in life, and it's coming back. He's losing mm-hmm. the mental capacity to control the things that he once controlled. Yeah. And I've been saying this since September. I give him um, I give him six. Well, I first said I give him 100 days. Now I'm saying I give him about six months and something something's going to happen. Uh, what that is, I don't know. Uh, could it be the enactment of the 25th Amendment because of mental decline? Um, maybe, uh, could it be that he, you know, if you really want to put your tinfoil hat on, he, he mysteriously contracts coronavirus, you know, and since he's in a advanced age, you know, he, 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 you know, he's probably not going to win that fight, you know, or, well, well, he's got the vaccine though. So, (laughs) so he's good. Right. Right. So if anybody isn't aware too, the CDC has come out and, and all the health departments are now allowed to tell people that the vaccine does not actually prevent the virus. It just lessens the symptoms. And out of the 8% well, of the United States population who has gotten the coronavirus, or the vaccine, only 10% of the people who have gotten it have contracted coronavirus after the second shot. What I will say is there's a couple of different vaccines. And I've talked to someone who has just gotten the vaccine. Uh, their remarks when I mentioned that is, well, that is true. There is a vaccine that um, that does not uh, that doesn't just suppress the symptoms. That is actually supposed to ward off the the virus completely. I'm I'm not I'm not a medical I'm not a medical whiz. This is just information that's being passed on uh, to me by someone that I you know that I trust in and in their in their thoughts and in their opinions. Um, you know it doesn't necessarily mean I agree. Uh, I, I just find it funny that uh, that the um, the vice president uh, Kamala Harris said that she would not take a vaccine that came from Trump, but but just days after the inauguration, she's getting stuck in the arm. You know, well, I'm you like, know, there's no proof that it was actually a vaccine in there. So there's a, there's also that. That is true. We've it's seen we've seen that failing. before. Mm-hmm. Um, to be fair, the video that everybody was pushing around at the beginning of the vaccine that was being done was from the H1N1 vaccine. Uh, it was an old video. I'd seen it probably 50 times before it came out as a new thing. Doctor gets fake virus, but. I digress. Oh, is that, that right? I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so that original one that was being pushed around, where the male doctor got a, an injection in his arm, but the the syringe was already emptied and and it was never actually whatever. Uh, that actually was from hmm. 
back under the H1N1 virus um, when they did the H1N1 vaccines to start. It was all the same thing. I mean, this is all cyclical when it comes to virology and viruses and people in America not trusting the government. Uh, we have reasons to not trust the government, so I think everybody's fair in that assessment. But um, the reality is do what you're going to do. Uh, I'm not going to shame anybody who gets it. I'm not going to shame anybody who doesn't want to get it. Uh, I understand both sides, and at the end of the day, just do your own research. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm. I'm. W- will I? Will I get the vaccine? Probably. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, my job requires me to get it, but I'm not going to get it anytime soon. Uh, you know, most vaccines are are uh, developed and looked over in the tens to 20 years and you now have a vaccine that has been pushed through in 10 months um that that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't pass the common sense test to me so uh, i'm gonna allow other people to take it i'm not going to take it it's just like the flu vaccine you know you get the flu vaccine and i got it i got the flu vaccine in what october of 2019 and ended up with influenza a in february Right. Um, about it's two weeks shoot. after shot show. It's a crap shoot. Um, yeah. I haven't gotten a flu shot in, it's gotta be 17 years. Hmm. I haven't gotten a flu shot in 17 years. And since I have stopped getting them, I get less sick. I'm sick way less often. It's interesting. So in the yeah. last 13 years of my employment, I've had five missed days due to illness. Oh, wow. So, uh, prior to that, I would get um, I have the flu not gotten all the time. a flu shot this year, so we'll see what happens. Well, you're you're good because influenza doesn't exist this year, so you, I was I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, cor- coronavirus <laughs> apparently killed influenza, so you're you're probably okay. Uh, Diggy B says when he worked offshore in 07 to 09, every time Greenpeace protesters came around, uh, they had to send out cleanup crews to clean up the oil leaking from their ships. I, it doesn't surprise me. Um, People don't realize how how much work and how much how much technology exists on offshore oil rigs. Um, I got a buddy who does uh, deep sea welding. Like, I mean, he's he's in the decompression That's chambers. Where the money's at right there. It is, but it's extremely dangerous. So, I mean, it, you think of explosive decompression uh, and what it what what it literally means is somebody made a a, a fraction of a second mistake. Um, it, it's it's pretty dangerous activity out there, and then you got companies that are offshore doing oil drilling, drilling that do cut corners, but they 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 cut corners by not having, you know, cluster weights on the bottom of the freaking bells that are going down. So when they the tether does break, they land directly on the bottom, and you can't get out. And now you got somebody who's dying in the bottom of the ocean. But there's a lot of ways you can go. Uh, he's chosen his. He said flat out. He goes, "There's two ways that I'm gonna die." He goes, "Decompression." or explosion i'll take either because they're quick and painless i don't feel a thing either way so mm. um i guess that's one way to look at it and he makes 155 dollars an hour so and he's paid yeah. from the time he starts working on the rig till the time he gets off the rig which is about seven days straight so i it's interesting you bring that up because um i was talked to uh, by a friend of mine who works for a company that um, may or may not um, have contracts overseas and uh, was asked if I would uh, be interested in, in you know, getting involved in that. And I was like, oh, absolutely. That's, that's exactly the line of work that I would love to get into. And, um, you know, if you, if you know my channel, if you've seen my channel, you probably can guess what I'm talking about. But uh, um, they, they were paying $500 a day. And I'm like, holy cow. And it's three months on, one month off. And I'm like, man, uh, that, would, uh, that would be awesome. So um, <laughs> haven't gotten a call back yet. <laughs> yeah. Five, $500 a day is low. So they were lowballing you for entry level, but that, that, eh, probably it could be, okay. but I, I do know, like I said, my buddy does the skilled labor portion of it. And, uh, but he, I mean, he's cert, he's certified to go to like 2,500 feet. So, uh, he, he makes good money doing it. 
Um, I think it's something like he said, he literally said um, every hour that he's on rig, it's like $156 an hour. And if he's asked to work past the four days, I think that he's supposed to, it's double time. So he makes $300 an hour and typically his typical work week is seven days. So for three days a week, he's getting 24 hours worth of pay at over $300 an hour. Wow. That's amazing. So that's, I mean, he's getting off that rig and he's buying a, a Bugatti because that's what he made that week. So I, I think I need to employ my VA benefits and utilize the Voke rehab and learn how to <laughs> weld. <laughs> yeah. Deep sea welding. That's where, that is where it's at. Uh, as long as you, as long as you can uh, be tested and prove that your body can handle high doses of hydrogen and nitrogen, you'll be good. I'm fine. I'm sure. It's, I'm sure. It's fine. <laughs> uh, and, and that you're okay with, you know, if somebody makes a mistake, you go through a, a tiny little pinhole, but <laughs> yeah, that that's, you know, I mean, I was, I was a tanker and the, the risk was this, about the same. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lag demon in the chat says foot and fire. Sup, man. Great to see you on. Uh oh. Oh here's to you. Wait. Uh Walloping Sexy Eddie says Mark knows Oleg. <laughs> uh only only through the interwebs. <laughs> uh Oleg is good fun, isn't he? Uh Tufu's in here. Yeah. Wow, wow. Hey, how's it going? I am oh, into hey. deep pussy diving. Um I would agree. I I would believe you if you weren't so Asian, but hey. <laughs> oh, pussy uh, equals Lewis Botkin. Wow. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, Lucas Botkin. So there was a call out on Instagram earlier today, wasn't there? <laughs> yes, there was. Yeah, I, I actually was. funny. It was, I was comical. In- did you actually saw it? Oh yeah, I saw it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, something about it not counting to, because I'm you just... didn't have your chesty. I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, okay. So there, I, I'm a part of a chat group uh, through uh, Instagram DM with a number of people, um, and I'm going to I'm going to say this uh, right off the bat. Um, Lucas Botkin is a mastermind uh, at marketing. He knows he knows the the things that people want, and he knows how to get it to them, and he knows how to get what they want in a very cool way. And okay, I'm very so, jealous of him. So for that. I was I was right there with you until you said in a very cool way. I was I was gonna say so. You're saying he's the Hitler. Of the gun community. <laughs> no, and then he said no, it in a very uh, cool way, and I'm like, well, that just throws that out because nothing cool about ovens. So, well, no, 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 not at all. But uh, he, he, he is providing products and services uh, that people really, really get into. And he's been able to plug into the video game um, uh, crowd. And I mean, you just look at the, the thing that I posted on his video, and you'll see that people just. Some people liked what I had to say, and some people, uh, some people started like, you know, doing the whole fanboy thing of like, oh, you said something bad about Botkin, but I didn't <laughs> say anything bad. He missed the target on on a on a tactical shoot, and uh, his response when I said, oh, look, there's four lawsuits. He's like, well, you're more than welcome to do the drill yourself and show your time and hits. Well, right. if 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 I'm in a civilian uh, environment. And I'm working in a tactical frame of mind. I'm not shooting very fast. I'm not going to shoot fast. I'm going to shoot accurate. And if my time suffers because of my accuracy, then I've got bigger problems to to uh, to deal with. Right. 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 So, and uh, you know, one of the conversations that we had that I had on the side with this uh, private DM group that I'm with is um, someone who uh, a lot of people know and a lot of people like says that there are people on the interwebs that are conflating competition shooting with tactical shooting and are trying to meld those things together. And while it looks sexy, while it looks sexy, 
uh, it's as far away from reality as possible. Right. Uh, because uh, first off, if you watch the video from a tactics point of view, he gets out. He sh he shoots from inside the vehicle. He gets out, opens the rear door, pulls out a backpack, leaves cover, and opens himself up to God and everybody while he's moving to another piece of cover, then opens his backpack to pull out his MPX. It looks really cool, but I can tell you one thing. If uh, if I'm pulling out a backpack with an MPX in it, I'm not leaving cover until I have that MPX because pistol sucks, rifles are awesome. Right. And uh, that's how I roll. So, you know, I would love to be able to recreate that drill that he did. I wouldn't leave cover. I wouldn't leave that cover. I would shoot from inside the vehicle, get out, pull the backpack out, pull the MPX out, pop up, shoot the other dude, and be done with it. I would beat his time, and I can guarantee you I'd be more accurate. So, um, as there was a whole bunch of wasted movement in there. He talks about efficiency of movement, you know, in his draw strokes and everything, and that's great. He's 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 you know talking he's talking some truth there, but at the same time in his drill, he's, there's tons of tactical mistakes and wasted movement. So, you know, you, you have to pay attention to what you're watching. Does it look cool? Yeah, they look cool. Uh, does he look cool in doing it? Sure does. But, uh, he did, he wasn't wearing his chest rig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I did not see the video of him doing whatever, but most of the stuff I don't watch, a lot of his stuff because it is very it, it's all competition shooting but i don't watch a lot of tactical shooting either i'm going to be completely honest like i literally like the videos that i watch if i want to if i want to learn something about shooting a gun from the internet number one uh don't learn everything you know about a gun from the internet okay go out and get some fucking training but number two if i if i want to learn something about shooting a gun from the internet i'm watching one of two channels um I'm I'm either watching John Lovell or Warrior Poet Society because he's 100% tactical, no bullshit. He's legitimately, you know, working angles, getting around, taking his time, doing his thing. But it isn't perfect. And I also watch Carry Trainer because S12, what he does there, it's good stuff. And and honestly, the best thing that I've learned from internet videos is don't focus on your shooting, focus on your medical, and it's reality. <laughs> Yeah. If you don't have medical, you're not in the fight. Because to think that you're going to be in a gunfight and not take fire is stupid. So have your medical ready and be proficient enough with your EDC or your handgun or your rifle in your vehicle to get through the fight. But understand that at some point you will probably take a round but know how to get through it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, laughs in Kyle Rittenhouse, right? I mean, freaking, um, that's what I really should have. That's what I really should have said when, when Lucas said, you know, you're more welcome to come and test your time and, 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 uh, your accuracy or whatever he said, I should have just replied back with laughs in Kyle Rittenhouse. Cause you know, dude dispatched, uh, how many, how many people with like crap gear and, what apparently looks to be very little training. <laughs> so, so I actually, I actually did. I actually will talk about Kyle Rittenhouse for a moment. Cause it's not been in the media. It's not been in the media very much lately. Right. Um, for a lot of people, nobody's really heard anything about it, but, um, it is still worthy of national attention, whether people are talking about it or not. And I, I would like to put this out there for people to understand that, uh, he is in the fight for his life right now. Um, yeah, he is. they are, they are right now, Due to the fact that the prosecuting attorneys doxed him, he has been forced to move from his home. Okay? Now the prosecuting attorneys are pissed off because they don't know where he lives. So they're saying that he absconded from his bond. So there is now a new hearing being held this next week uh, within the court system to determine whether he broke bond, whether they're going to increase his bond, and whether or not they're just going to throw him back in jail. He was literally doxxed so, by the he, prosecuting attorneys, and his attorneys moved him to a safe house, told them, hey, we moved him to a safe house. If you need to contact him, get with us. And the prosecuting so attorneys... How did they that, dox him? They, they leaked his address. 
they le- they put his address on all the court documents. So in the state of Wisconsin, and this is this isn't the same everywhere. So in the state of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin okay. Circuit Court access page, which you can literally go WCCA Wisconsin, and you can look up anybody, any open documents, any closed documents that are affiliated with the court that have that name associated to it will pop up. It's a hundred percent searchable to the public. In a high profile case like this, they are supposed to restrict access to the WCCA accounts. They didn't. His home address was on every one of his court documents. So you have, yeah, 60% of a population in a County who thinks that Kyle Rittenhouse was in the wrong and he should die. And they have, they have said so. They have, they've received death threats. They've received a bunch of everything, right? I mean, for Christ's sakes, professional gamers get people who swat their houses for fun. Mm-hmm. We live in a society where people don't care about other people's lives. So somebody got the address and they put it out there. Now, that happened because the prosecuting attorneys screwed up. Sounds like to me that's a lawsuit. 100%. 100%. However, it's a civil lawsuit right there. However, he is in a fight for his life, running literally from safe house to safe house, trying to prevent his death prior to him actually getting to court. Because number one, they don't want him in court because they know they're going to lose. Yep, they're going to lose. The other the other thing that they don't want is the riots again. So they're trying to prevent riots by keeping people calm by keeping him locked up, essentially. I mean, this they, these people have gone to the point where he was seen at a bar with his parents. They were out to eat. So people who aren't from the Midwest or aren't from Wisconsin area probably, well, what's he doing at a bar? He's not 21. Well, in the state of Wisconsin, as long as you're 16 years of age, you can drink at a bar with your parents. Um, that's just the way it is. Um. Excuse me. Um, but he was out doing that, and he took a picture with some people who happened to be affiliated with the Proud Boys. Do you think he fucking took resumes on the people he took pictures with? People wanted a picture with him. Right. He took the picture. Well, they happened to be Proud Boys. They flashed the, you know. What's interesting about it is they flashed the Oath Keeper symbol. You know, but, you know, Oath Keeper symbol, which is the OK, means, you know, white power, apparently. Um, we live in an upside down world. I don't understand, <laughs> but you know, that used to mean that I got to punch you in the fucking arm. But anyways, <laughs> uh, that's where we're at. Like he is literally in a fight for his life and people have walked away from it because, well, it's not, it's not the biggest thing right now. Well, it kind of is when it comes to self-defense law, especially in the state of Wisconsin. So we're, we're keeping pretty on top of it. Um, I, I feel so bad for the kid. You know, there's, there's a lot of people who I've even heard in this community who are like, well, he went out there with a gun. He was kind of looking for it and, and, and whatever. Yeah. But he, maybe, maybe he was still, he was in a position and and anybody who's watched those videos, he was in a position of self-defense regardless of why he was there. He was in a self-defense position. He did not open fire until somebody else fired. And the video literally clearly shows somebody shooting a gun and then him freaking out, turning around and opening fire. Well, and it's interesting, you know, people talk about, Hey, you know, he shouldn't have been there. I was like, okay, come on, dude. When you were that age, right. Cause he's what? 20. Is that right? He is 18. 18 so he's 18. 18. Now. So at the time okay. of the incident, so he was 17. 17. Right. <clears throat> so at 17, what was some of the dumb stuff that you did? You know, and some people probably didn't do anything dumb, but I can tell you at 17, 18, 19, 20, 34, 90, yeah, 30, 40, 42. Uh, I've done some really, really dumb stuff, you know, at 15, uh, and, at you know, 15, I watched a friend of mine blow his head off. Okay. Like I've been into some dumb shit. It wasn't a suicide either. It was, it was mishandling of a gun. It was a negligent discharge. So it's a it's a a disgusting thing but this is this is the way we were i mean we were all drinking having fun you know doing everything you shouldn't do being stupid you kids mm-hmm. you do stupid shit mm-hmm. and he thought he knew better 
and he thought he could count, but apparently while he was drinking, he couldn't. So he learned a lesson, and he talked with his hands. So yep. we know what happens there. Um. Anyways, I will segue away from Kyle Rittenhouse a little bit. Um. <laughs> can we can we go back to HR one twenty seven? Absolutely. I had I had a point that I wanted to make when it came to to that resolution. Um. What they have what they have talked about with that uh, with that law is completely ridiculous. Is it going to pass? We've kind of we kind of touched on it. Is it going to pass? Eh, probably not. But I can't remember who said it. It was either um, I think I either heard it with John Patton, or I may have heard it from Tim Pool of all p- people. I know that's kind of a vast disparity between <laughs> the two, but it was one or the other, and what they said was they've seen it before. Well, they, they will just shotgun blast the most horrifying law to firearms ownership out there. And people look at it and they're like, that's crazy. They, that would never pass. Right. So they dial the rhetoric way up. Right. So now, now the rhetoric is to, uh, is to 11 and then it gets shut down. So then they dial the rhetoric up to like, say, eh, let's say we'll do it a five. It's like, okay, so that didn't go. So instead of, instead of a assault weapons ban and a registration, why don't we just do a magazine capacity of 10? Just call it good on that. And then, so the, what we would have thought was crazy a few years back now seems kind of reasonable to politician standpoint. And um, so you, you, you kind of see how they turn it way up. So people are just like, oh, no, <laughs> no, no. So they understand that, okay, that is, that's just crazy. And it's never going to happen. They're able to dial it back and kind of pick and uh, choose the different things that they want. Kind of what you were talking about earlier. And I just wanted to throw that out there to make sure that people are paying attention to that. Because when they see these laws, just like down in Florida, They've got a state bill that's trying to get passed. Same type of thing as HR 127. Super crazy. But they may dial it back and um, see if they can get some of the lesser aspects of it passed. And I see that Tufu says, I kind of want 127 to pass. I know exactly why he's saying it too. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I, I, I fully understand exactly where he's coming from. Uh, I think 127 would be the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, th- there would be no compliance. There would be no way to comply. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous yeah. to think that at this point, anybody would comply to that regulation. Um, yeah. I would like to see them attempt to put 75 million Americans in prison for no less than 10, but no more than 25 years. That ain't going to go well. Cause if you, That's I'm going to, I'm going to put this out there right now. Um, if my options are 10 to 25 years in prison or short barreled rifle coming for you, I'm not going to prison. I've been to jail and going back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> You know, and th- that's a tough choice. Uh, I, I, w- I would have to say that people people are at a breaking point right now, not because of not because of the politics, not because of the laws that they're trying to pass, not because of you know X, Y, and Z. It's the accumulation of everything that has happened over the last you know thirteen months. Right. Or even some people would say over the last four years or some people would say even the last six years, it's this this snowballing effect that has been uh, weighing us down for quite some time to the point where this is this is going to be. This may, I hope this isn't a straw man argument, but um, if you guys have seen the video of the shooting in Pennsylvania uh, that happened, was it yesterday or two days ago? Yes. Um, I think was it yesterday? Yeah. Uh, there's some video going around. Uh, if you guys are on Instagram and you want to see the video, feel free to DM me and uh, I'll get it sent over to you. It's it's kind of hard to watch. 
It's really hard to watch, but it shows you exactly where people are at when it comes to the breaking point. These neighbors had gotten into an argument over snow, over shoveling snow, and whether or not it was on someone else's driveway or whatever the case may be, and they're at a breaking point. And dude flew off the handle and shot both of his um he shot both of his neighbors with a pistol, walked back inside, grabbed a rifle, and then executed him. Right. It's all on video. I, I, I it's it's shocking. It's the most non-graphic, gruesome video that I've ever seen in my entire life. It scares the crap out of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's it it it's really ridiculous. And obviously, this is a situation where uh, a lot of people. I mean, these people they obviously have been fighting long before this incident and and yes, nobody's gonna t- nobody's gonna tell me otherwise but um i i will say oh, that's confirmed yeah okay I, I do i did hear it i haven't confirmed it and and that's why i didn't say it but it, it's like it was almost obvious that they had literally been at arms you know at this point for a while and this was just literally that was that straw it was just snap but um it's happening more and more everywhere. Like I yeah. literally live 30 minutes north of yesterday. Um, we had a police intervention uh, in the middle of the country. Uh, it started with apparently some 30 year old guy had stolen a car, drove it 30 miles, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, not 30 miles. It's maybe 15 miles, but he'd been driving around with it for about 30 minutes, uh, crashed it, uh, broke into an unoccupied house, tried to steal a vehicle out of there. There was nothing. So he left. Uh, when he was trying to leave, somebody had come across the vehicle that he crashed and was there to try and help him. Uh, he assaulted that lady, tried to steal her car, crashed that uh, within a couple hundred feet, and then broke into a senior citizen's house, got their car keys, went out to the driveway to start their vehicle. It wouldn't start. So he got pissed off, came back in the house, and at that point... The old man in that house, uh, 77-year-old male, uh, retrieved his pistol to self de- for self-defense, and somehow his pistol was wrestled away from him and used to kill him. Uh, apparently, he went oh. to shoot his wife as well, but the gun malfunctioned. So I'm assuming my assumption, or my wife's assumption even, is that uh, maybe the old man's gun malfunctioned when he attempted to use it. Um and then the kid got it, or the guy got it, and killed him with it. And then it malfunctioned on the next one because we all know that guy whose gun is in the safe hasn't touched it for twenty years, and then he goes to try and use it, and something doesn't work. Um, they're out it's probably there. these strings in the magazine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not going there, Mark. Not going there. <laughs> strings in magazines don't wear out. God damn it. I, I went there with John Lovell at his uh, his <laughs> course that he had out here. He uh, he appreciated the uh, trolling. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Um, but then the the weirdest thing is like, then he leaves with their car, a, a different car, maybe goes to the neighbor's house, but whatever subsequent issue, he left, and the neighbor next to them obviously heard the gunshots, got his shotgun, and was like ready and waiting and. When the guy came to his house, somehow got his gun wrestled away from him. So this guy is fucking Superman or some shit at this point. Um, killed that old man. It's disgusting. It's sick. And then gets into a, su- a subsequent firefight with the police when they finally arrive. And uh, the the cop, he took a shot from the cop and then drones finally found him dead in the woods. So luckily, I mean, the guy felt the pain, bled out in the woods painfully. Um, so at least there's that. But now there's two families, you know, three vehicles destroyed, you know, two families that have completely, you know, lost everything. And all because of what? Nobody knows. This guy literally just stole a vehicle mm-hmm. and went on a fucking tear. And ended up dying from it. And we'll never know. We'll never know why. What the fuck was going... How... 
And th- and then all we can come back to is the fact that nobody has been able to get any mental health help. Yeah. You know, and it's funny that you bring this up because this sounds eerily similar to what happened to my daughter's mother's sister. Um, my, so my daughter, her name is uh, derived from her aunt and cousin who were killed in a, uh, a mass shooting incident in Southern Alabama, Samson, Alabama in uh, March of 2009. And um, same, not exactly the same, but uh, there's a lot of similarities to what happened there and what happened down in Southern Alabama. Um, so, you know, you know, I've seen it firsthand and I've seen not only how devastated a family is because of someone flying off the handle and, and deciding that it's time to take someone else's life, take multiple people's lives. Um, and then also to see the family stand up and say, you know what? Uh, that dude was a, was a dirt bag, was a piece of trash. He had mental health issues. He took our family member away from us, but we recognized that it was him that did it. It wasn't the firearm. It was him uh, because he would have found a way to do it one way or the other. Um, I mean, he, he, he started by burning his house down uh, with his, with his parents, with his, was it his grandparents or his parents in it, you know? So, you know, need a firearm to do that. <laughs> right. You know, so, that's the thing is like, uh, you know, like, people are inherently fucking evil. Like, hmm? And it, and this is, I mean, I'm evil, you're evil, everybody's fucking evil, but there's shit that we do that, or, or shit that we believe that drive us away from that evality, you know, that, that bring us yeah. closer to positivity. And, and that's the work that we put in that brings us closer to, you know, whether it's a higher power, or you believe in God or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you believe in that, that whatever the work we put in is what brings us to where we are. Um, and unfortunately with COVID, I think a lot of people haven't been able to get the work in that they need to get in. Um, and you, and you, you'd be surprised at how much human interaction goes such a long way. I mean, just, just going to work and being around other people can be such a decompressant that people don't even realize, even though you may not like the people that you're around. There's someone at work that you don't necessarily mind and you feel safe in talking to, you right. know? Well, so that's a big thing. Like, I mean, if it wasn't, honestly, if it wasn't for this show, um, if it wasn't, sorry, I had to you know, tactical burp, you know, I had to, to, to silence things up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for this show, I, I honestly, there's not a lot of people that I can talk to about politics without getting certain things in the way um Mm -hmm. but i try not to i'm trying to stay a little bit more out of the political realm but it's it's really hard in today's age number one politics are everywhere number two we're not getting away from them anytime soon so um we do need in my opinion a change up in how we view politics and, and in how we approach them as as a society as voters as you know civically minded individuals but that's another a conversation we've had it before and i'll have it again but um you know we just generally need to be better people and and you're 100 percent correct though about that little bit of interaction legitimately if you can just if you see somebody walking along the street sometimes just saying hi is enough to prevent a fucking catastrophe like people people feel like they don't exist and we're in a society where literally this right here, this cell phone, and yeah, Apple, yeah, fucking, you can you can throw me under the bus for that later. I don't care. Um, <laughs> we live in a society where that is more important than physical or contextual interaction with people around us. Mm. We're we're zombies to it. All of us, and and I'm I'm as guilty as anybody else. Where. I'll be going through my day and I'll just all of a sudden I'm like, I'm on Instagram. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Oh, oh, okay. I got this person just started following me. Okay. I'm going to go check them out. You know, 
Um, oh, that's a scam. That's that's just some fucking loser because I commented on a Gary V post. But <laughs> but it happens. You you comment on somebody who's got a million followers, you're gonna get three to seven different scam accounts that are following you. Great, help my follower account. You're just a scammer though. So congratulations. <laughs> Not following you back. Well, I mean, there is a uh, there's a documentary on Netflix that talk about how uh, how phones, how smartphones, how apps are addictive, and how they uh, have been engineered to be addictive and to give you that little dopamine drop every single time you get a like or you get a comment or something like that. And just like you said, I'm just as guilty of it as anyone else. Um, uh, I've been working to put my phone down uh, and just to stay away from it. Um, last night was a great example. Uh, I wasn't feeling too good. Um, <laughs> I won't go into the details, but uh, I, uh, I, I, you ate some gas station sushi. No, 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 no. I, I pretty much OD'd on caffeine yesterday, uh, unintentionally. Oh, I hate um, the I hate the I hate the too much caffeine jitters. You get oh that man, stomach it was bad. I was like ready twitch, to throw up that, and yeah. everything. <laughs> but, uh, but one and a half cu- pots of coffee in because you're just like feeling it, and it's like, oh crap, that one was the one. That was the one. Oh. Shit. So well, okay. So I'm gonna go into it. Uh, yesterday, I went to the gym. And I took some pre-workout. I uh, got to the gym and uh, had a had a good workout. Um, I have a workout partner that kind of keeps me accountable to to go to the gym because someone who even just me who's passionate about going and working out still have hard times where I don't want to go to the gym. So I have a partner that gets me there. So um, my workout partner, myself, and my daughter, we were at the gym. Get there had my pre-workout and my partner's like, Hey, I know that you've had some, um, you know, you're, you're working through some, some, uh, some joint pain and stuff like that here. Take this pill. It's a multivitamin. Uh, it's kind of gives you a little bit of a, a boost as well. It's got some caffeine in it, but it should be okay. So I, I was like, oh, okay. So I took it. No problem. You know, I looked at the, looked at the bottle, you know, so I knew that I wasn't taking like freaking crack or something, you know, <laughs> and then did the workout, had a great workout. And then after which, uh, my workout partner was like, Hey, let's go and let's go to complete nutrition real quick. Uh, and, uh, let's take a look at some of their supplements. I think that might be able to find something for you to kind of give you a, a natural, um, boost throughout the day. Cause I've been struggling with being tired, uh, throughout the day. You didn't get the so- COVID, did you? I didn't. No, no. Are you sure? At least I don't think so. You may I'm be asymptomatic. Sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can taste. I can taste my vodka. I right? haven't. So. I haven't smelt anything in a couple months. Which, to be completely honest, if I did get COVID, which I'm assuming I did, thank you, COVID. I have a son in diapers. Not being able to smell is a fucking godsend. Yes. Yes, that is. <laughs> um, so um, I have a question about that uh, here in just a second, but. Um, so we got to the nutrition store and looked around. I was able to pick up some stuff, um, some you know, just some some greens and stuff like that. And then um, my partner was uh, picking up some some other uh, kind of organic pre workout type of stuff. But I didn't realize what it was. And they're like, "Hey, would you like a sample of it?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll try it." And I choked it down. It was awful. Oh, so bad. Uh, tastes just like dirt. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. So took off from the store, headed home and got, almost got home. And I started feeling, feeling a little tingly and I'm like, mm, wow, I'm starting to feel a little hyper. <laughs> and then by the time I had gotten uh, the three blocks to my house, and pulled into my driveway. I'm just like, oh, this is not going to, this is not going to end well. And I just looked at my daughter and I was like, hey, you're gonna have to figure out dinner on your own. I gotta go like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's so, really interesting that the the you would you wouldn't think that overdoing caffeine would put you in a position where you're like, I need to go lay down. I need to just go chill for a minute. Um, 
I remember it's an axis says, did it have niacin in it? That will do it. Uh, it probably, I, I, it could have, I will say it probably could have, but there is that point where caffeine just fucking wrecks you. And it's like, I'm assuming, you know, most pre-workouts are all about energy. It wrecked you. <laughs> yeah, it did. It also had Kratom in it, which um, I'm not sure what it is, but it, it is a, it's a, it's a plant. It's a stimulant. That, it's a stimulant. Yeah. And it kind of gets you high. Yeah. So it's got that in it. I know that for a fact. And I think that's what really overdid it for me. So, um, all I know was I laid in bed for a little over an hour and I had like cold sweats and I finally got up. Um, my daughter brought me, uh, just, she is such a trooper. She is, oh man, I, I am so blessed to have this little girl in my life, but she brought me food in bed. I was just like, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> she brought me a chicken breast that I had in the, in the, um, refrigerator. She heated up and then brought me some toast as well. And I finally got, uh, okay enough to move to the couch. And I just laid down on the couch and I'm just like, baby girl, just put something on and, uh, watch something. And we'll watch up together. And we just colored together. And I had my phone, the whole point of this story is I had my phone in the other room and it was just sitting there just dinging and going off. And I was getting all these different notifications and everything. And I just left it in there. I didn't even care. I didn't even right, care about right. it. Um, and it, it was, it was felt kind of good, you know, not to even yeah. care who was even well, that's talking good, to me. That's I the good had stuff, my daughter. Man. I've been trying to do that a little bit more as well myself. Just it's ridiculous. Like I I'm at this point where I'm like, well, between the old business the new business, well, which really isn't a business, it's just I moved everything over from Boog Brand to Tactical Pineapple. Um, mm. You know, I moved it from me doing the shit to somebody else. I, I'm, I have it all at Teespring now, so I pulled the higher higher stuff over there. But um, I literally went. I, I have like fucking seventeen email accounts on my phone. Like, if if you don't know what it's like to balance three fucking email accounts, try seventeen. Like. And I answer all the emails like with with my business. I answered every customer service request. I answered every customer question. I was in the live chat. I literally was on my phone 24 hours a day. If I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I was on my phone. And and I'd spend 15, 20 minutes on the phone. <laughs> I can't like I was I was literally there, but. Now I don't have the business, so I, I've been spending more time pushing things off and just setting it to the side. And I'll be honest, I it is great. It's fantastic. Um, and the best way to do it is my son's addicted to cell phones, so I just put on like Blippy or uh, Baby Shark for like an hour and a half loop, and I just hand it to my son. And, and for an hour and a half, two hours, he's running around with my phone. I can't look at it. <laughs> it's perfect for me. He's addicted yeah. as shit, but it's perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, my daughter right now, let's see, it's nine thirty. She's she's going on four and a half hours on her tablet. So, you know. Yeah. Um well, and that's my daughter too. We spent, like Yeah. We we spent we spent most of the day together anyway. So it's Friday evenings. She doesn't get her tablet throughout the week. So um so it's it she's binging on it right now. So <laughs> My daughter, my daughter is three years old, so she gets her tablet, you know, when my, my wife needs to take care of our son for the day or just different times throughout the day. But then she gets like, she's a, she's into these programs, which is really interesting. It's like, I pay very close attention to what she watches. I'm extremely close mm -hmm. attention. Like I know what she's watching. I'm paying attention to it. And I'm like, okay, that's not bad but this is kind of weird. And then like tonight, like she's having a snack and she's sitting there and she's totally enthralled and she's listening to this fucking, I don't know. It's a family in Russia. It's not in English at all. And she's just totally enthralled. Just like, it's like, can you understand them? <laughs> because I need you <laughs> to tell me Do what you they're speak saying. Russian. <laughs> That's my worst. That is a horrible Russian accent. But uh... you're drinking vodka and you talk Russian like shit. What the fuck? 
Anyway, uh, you know, um, I, I do have a comment up on the window right now. Armaments and Axes a couple a, a while ago said this. Um, Trooper for sticking in, and, and yeah, I got it up there. He wants us to talk about the Biden administration wanting to screen military personnel to see if they conform. So I'm assuming this is going back to the inauguration where they were legitimately. Oh, no, it does not. Screening people. But, no, it does not. This is this is something brand new. Really? That, okay. Yes, okay. So Pentagon, I'm not in some of this. I, I'll ahead. listen to you. I'm not in some of this. I haven't heard it. So if you're familiar with it, we we can talk about it. Yeah, it just came out today, either today or yesterday. But just in the last couple of days, it came out that the Pentagon is requiring the military to stand down to root out, um, to root out extremism. That's the that's the headline is that they're going to root out extremism. So um, last I checked, every person who is in the military has risen their right hand and has sworn allegiance to who? That's the that's the big question. Who does every single enlisted and officer raise their right hand to uh, swear allegiance to? Does anybody in the chat room know? I would like to see if anyone. If anyone knows, I'll give it a second here, but it's, it's really interesting how they do that. Um, you saw it with the inauguration with the national guard people who, uh, there were, there were a few people who were, um, uh, sent home because of extremists. And there you go. Freaking, uh, sexy Yeti. He said, uh, I can't even say it. What is it? Walloping sexy Yeti. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is to the Constitution. Yeah. Um, it is not to the president. The president is in charge of them, but they do not swear allegiance to the president. They swear allegiance to uh, the Constitution, to defend, to defend and the, Constitution, the Constitution, to, to all enemies, against yep. all enemies, foreign, foreign and, and domestic. domestic. So. Yep, absolutely. And uh, so the inauguration, they had the National Guard come in. And why did they have the National Guard? Do you know that? The National Guard is technically the only military service that can stand guard on American soil. Otherwise, they're uh, against posse comitatus. Exactly. Good job. Um, n not that I'm quizzing you. I know that you know this, but uh, um, the the interesting thing is that um, you know, obviously. Uh, my ex-wife, she's she's military. Uh, we, we still have a really great relationship. You know, uh, I talked to her on the phone today. She was asking me about stuff. Uh, you know, what's in the news? And I brought up this whole situation with the Pentagon ordering a stand down. And uh, my comment is basically, you know, last I checked, everyone swore allegiance to the Constitution. It has nothing to do with political party. Um, now, if there are people who are dumb enough to put stuff on their social media stuff, you know, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever, you know, um, talking about conspiracy theories or whatever, then yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be pretty dicey. But if, if someone posted something, say in September or October, uh, or even the first part of November that said, you know, I'm voting for Trump, um, they should not be held, uh, in contempt because they are supporting their commander in chief. And, you know, regardless if you like it or not, it doesn't matter. I went to Afghanistan in 2010, 2011 under Barack Obama, and I didn't agree with a lot of his policies. But he was my boss at the time and he, his, his policies and his, um, his, his, um, his, uh, joint chiefs of staff said that, this unit needs to go to that place at this time. So I did it because I'm in a volunteer army. Now, um, if people start getting UCMJ actions, I wouldn't be surprised to see some, uh, some lawsuits come out of this as well. Uh, so uh, be very interesting how this is going to play out. But yes, there is, there is some stuff that has come down the pike from the Pentagon. Um, and I hate to say it, but um, I'm starting to see that uh, Animal Farm in 1984 is getting moved from the fiction aisle to the nonfiction aisle. 
yeah. starting to get really scary. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I, I've been seeing that for a little while. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people have been seeing it for a little while. Um, I guess not unfortunately. I don't know why I would say unfortunately. Um, it, it's good that people actually see what's happening. Uh, unfortunately, the unfortunate part of that is that I don't think there's enough people who are willing to give up everything to go against it. So, un, you know, we, we live in a society where um, I'm guilty of it too. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm not guilty of it. Um, I have nice things. I've worked for nice things. I have a comfortable living situation for my family, and I don't want to give up everything. <laughs> and so I I abide to the situation where it's like, well, when they come to my door, this and that, and blah blah blah. But I do attempt to push out good information to people. I. Have, I, I try to help people do the right thing. Uh, I try to spread that, you know, locally because the reality is, is that as much as people want to say that they have a national influence, whatever, I don't care. Um, do your shit locally because we need everybody to do local first. Like we've had the conversation before. Um, everything has to start locally and grow because otherwise it, it's never going to take hold. Like, I don't care. You know, all these people are like, well, Trump's starting his own party. Congratulations. Who gives a shit? It's going to subjugate 35 to 72% of the Republican Party, which means it's still going to be a minority party regardless. So what is it doing? Nothing. We need to put people in office based on policy, not party. Two party system is bullshit. Yep. I think in this election we saw, what do we see? We saw the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the Constitutionalists. We saw the Libertarians. We saw the Green Party. We saw all that. Every single one of those that actually made the ballot was just a means of dividing the vote. So start locally, grow it, and actually mean something when we vote. We've got. I mean, I would love to see a third party become active. Yeah, we've got four years to promote a a third party, and if we do it starting locally, uh, I believe everybody in the next year has local elections. So, start locally. Within the next two years, we have national elections when it comes to Senate and House. You know, we have gubernatorial races in the next year. Like this, there are staggers in the system so that people can actually create change. But we got to start locally, otherwise, the change never occurs. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts about? Um, let's see here. There was a, a head up thought here. Uh, what do you? What are your thoughts about the GOP, uh, or at least Representative? Um, Marjorie Taylor Green being removed from her committees. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that says anything about cancellation? Well, I have I have a, a particular feeling about cancel culture. Uh, my business was completely shut down by. Oh, it. I should do too. <laughs> um, I, but I'm I'm going to say this. So I've had this argument with other people. I don't necessarily think that Marjorie Taylor Green was in the right in her attack against David Hogg in the way she carried out herself. However, well, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with this part of it. What, what so was the, the whole, David Hogg? Piece? So the whole, this whole thing started this, this whole fucking thing started because of an argument she had where she, she followed David Hogg in Washington, DC, arguing with him and verbally attacking him. This is, this is where the whole thing started. Then they're like, Oh, we need to do something about her because she is a violent person. And and they brought up all this other stuff that she says or whatever. But it all started over some David Hogg shit. So, number one, everybody's like, he's just a child. No, he's a 20-year-old man who's decided to make a living off of something he wasn't even fucking involved in. So, yep. Oh, uh, there's there's a funny piece to that, but go ahead. 
I mean, I've seen it, and 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 it's it's become more prevalent over the last week because of AOC. I kind of think I understand where you're going with that. Like, uh, well, you weren't there, neither was I, type deal. But oh no, no, it gets even better than that. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, but but the the reality is is all of this started over that, and everybody's like, we need to hold our representatives to a higher standard. Why? I want anybody in the chat to tell me why we need to hold our representatives to a higher standard because our representatives are supposed to be of the people and by the people. They are Ooh, no better Mary. than anybody. And if anybody sits here and tells me there are leaders, fuck you. I don't want you in my chat. Sorry, but they are not our leaders. They are our representatives. We elected them to a position to represent us as the people. They are not our fucking leaders. They are not above us. They are not better than us. They serve us. So there's that. But, but I think I think what the problem has run we've run into is that we have made them a cult of personality over the decades. Uh, I would say probably probably starting man, I want to say probably in the 1940s with FDR moving forward, if not even before then, we've created these politicians to be a cult of personality that, you know, they're they're somehow better than us or whatever the case may be. And we we now see them as well, they're 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 on a pedestal, you know? Okay, so, and we must kind of bow down to them. So I'm gonna say that we didn't actually we allowed them to create it themselves. Yeah, I, yes, I will say absolutely. I will say that yeah. um however the issue is is this it, it comes down to anybody and, and and this is a self-confidence thing this is this is you can use this anywhere that that you need to have confidence in yourself if you legitimately tell yourself that you can do something you will be able to do it if you tell yourself you can't mm -hmm. you won't it's 100 percent the reality if you oh, yeah, if you subjugate yourself to being below somebody when you meet that person or you see that person, you will, in your mind, put yourself beneath them and you will coddle to them. You will, you will be below them. You'll grovel at their feet. You, this is a this is know, a major it, thing that happens with men dating women and everything like that. You put them on a pet. You put pussy on a fucking pedestal. What happens? <laughs> it, it, it's it's I'm it's it's down to that level of shit. We allow yeah, we allow them to be on that pedestal. We put them on that pedestal, and then we grovel at their fucking feet. Yeah, Arm of it and Axis. He he says there's too much elitism in our government. Uh, this is the swamp that Trump talked about, and and I I, I agree with that. You know, you you have people like you have people like freaking um, President Biden. He has not done anything in 47 years except be a government worker. His, his press secretary has done nothing except for a small little stint where she went and was a CNN contributor and was a uh, part of some think tank for the DNC or something to that effect. But well, I don't know much about that. I don't know much about that, but I'll have to circle around to it. Exactly. You have to circle. That's true. That's, that, that's, that's okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> but anyway, we have people like Biden. We have people like Bernie Sanders. We have people like the press secretary. Uh, I don't even remember her name, but um, uh, those types of people who have done nothing, nothing in society, but be a part of the, swamp in dc you know and you know what part of me is like well i mean if they can get away with it i guess kudos to them you know but at the same time i'm like this is this is the problem and and i it, it's easy for me to pick on it's easy for me to pick on those those people over there because you know the, the dnc and everything but there's just as many people in the republican party that has done the exact same thing you know and i i I, I will freely admit that I was a staunch Jim, uh, I was a staunch Republican for a very, very, very long time. But now I'm I'm at the point now I'm just like man, 
I don't even know what I am anymore. I, I'm I'm sitting here watching uh, the Dark Knight and cheering from the Joker, you know, because here's a dude that's down on his luck, just trying to freaking mix up the system. And what I'm going to I'm going to rely on a freaking trust fund baby to come in and save me. <laughs> what it is, what it is, is that you've spent years trying to defend freedom. And then you came oh. back and you've looked around and realized the difference between what freedom is taught, taught, mm-hmm. and what freedom really is. And and this is this pisses a lot of people off. And I don't care. Um, freedom is allowing people to do whatever the fuck they want so long as it doesn't affect anybody else's freedom. So if you want to have sex with another male in the back of the fucking 7-Eleven, and that's what makes you happy, go for it. Doesn't fucking affect me at all. Doesn't does not bug me at all. Try to stick it in my ass. I'm gonna fucking cut it off. Now, uh, you know, there's there's <laughs> limits, but you know, see, I, mean, that's the I thing. don't I, care. I, this is what you do. One of one of my favorite one of my favorite comments to people is, "Hey, it's 2020, or it, well, now it's it's 2021. You know, right? Stop being a freaking phobe. You know." <laughs> I think the biggest problem though is like we constantly get segregated because we're like, oh, you're conservative. Well, ish, ish. I'm conservative ish. Okay. So I have I have some beliefs that are hundred percent conservative. I think if that you if you have the opportunity to take a life to make your life feel better, aka abortion, you are a fucking monster. Hmm. Period. Plain and simple. I, I also believe that we as a country need to do better in allowing people to adopt their children out. We need to make it more affordable you know, it, for people to get children who actually want children. Like, There's a lot of people in this country who can't have kids, who want kids, but it's sixty fucking thousand dollars if you want to adopt. That's a barrier. That's a huge and, and, barrier. And I, and one, one thing I will say when it comes to the abortion aspect of it is, you know, I, I've talked here recently with someone who has worked uh, in a crisis center, you know, and has, you know, been around the abortion topic very intimately and have had that discussion. And, you know, I, I personally believe, you know, that, that um, you know, life begins at conception. That's my personal belief. But at the same time, I cannot cannot tell another person what they what they're supposed to do with their body, right? If I'm the same type of person that says my body my choice when it comes to a vaccine, then there's no way for me to tell someone else what they can and cannot do. That doesn't necessarily mean that I can't speak out against it and say, "Hey, I don't think that's right," but at the end of the day, that's your that's your life to live, and if you just if you feel that that's what you need to do, then you know, and that's not my problem. Now, where where it where I divert from that argument is the point where it has something to directly impact me, right? So if if I was to knock up my old lady and then she's like, nah, I'm going to abort it, then I'm like, mm, we need to have a talk, all right? Because you're right. talking about my spawn as well as yours, so we need to have a talk about how we're going to get through that. Um, there is there is options to, to adopt. You know, I, I know people who have been surrogates and I'm like, mm, wow, that's, I would have never expected that from them, but they did it and they felt, they felt great about doing it. And in, in hindsight, I'm like, Oh, that's great. Uh, good for them. I'm, I'm glad that they did that for someone else. But uh, also I just, you know, the, the, it's interesting if you ever get a chance to sit down with someone and have a discussion when it comes to abortion and have a discussion with that person who's on the opposite side of the aisle, you'd be surprised at how, how closely, how closely people really are on the subject. It's, it's really what boils down to it is the vocal minority and that, that goes to all the different topics that we're talking about is the vocal minority, the people that have the Twitters and the, the Facebooks and have those platforms to really push their agenda on us makes it seem like it's mainstream when in fact, a lot of people are like, uh, what, what, where is this coming from? So there's my little rant about that. 
Yeah, no, and I mean I can understand both sides. I really can. I get it. Um, my personal opinion, and and I know there's people who agree, there's people who disagree. My personal opinion is, um, we go through a lot of effort to protect ourselves. We go through a lot of effort to protect other people who are unprotected. Um, to me, it's murder. I'm sorry. I understand. Sure. I understand that certain circumstances and, and I and and this is the thing like I have no disrespect I have no ill will for anybody who feels differently like you are allowed mm-hmm. and entitled to your own opinion on it you that is 100% your choice like I am not going to judge anybody based on that I think it I think it's murder because I believe as you do life begins at conception I believe that it's my job to stand up and talk to and, and talk for the person who cannot talk for themselves. And we do a hell of a lot to protect our, our citizens who they're in comas or they're, they're old and can't take care of themselves. And we keep them on life support and we do everything we can to keep them alive. But that one voice who can't speak for themselves, who hasn't even had an opportunity to live. We're just like, Eh, we'll fucking pull it out with a coat hanger. <laughs> yeah, and and, and I and, and I'll, it's a, I'll kind of leave argument. it at that one because I I get it. It's a very tough argument. It's one that people are either for or against. And I have my opinion. You're entitled to yours. And and I'm not saying that yours is different very much. I it, it is what it is. Like I understand all sides of the argument and people thinking that. Just because I believe a certain way means that I think you're a fucking monster. Well, I kind of do, but at the same time, it is what it is. Um, I can think that you're a monster, and I can also talk to you as a person. So, (laughs) um, and and the the uh, the the interesting thing is, uh, I fully support Dave Chappelle's opinion about about abortion. Have you have you watched his Sticks and Stones? I've uh, seen quite a bit of it. I don't know if I'm gonna put it oh, this. I'm gonna boy. put it this way. I've. It's been a while. Uh, it was actually when he first came out. I watched it. Um, I don't remember what he said anymore. So he said, uh, when it comes to abortion, he said, "Guys, you just need to shut up. Just shut up about abortion. If you're a man, you have no say in it. Hey, ladies." Uh, if you want to have an abortion, so that's your prerogative. But if you want to keep the baby, the man should be able to abandon that kid without any. <laughs> yeah. should, no child support, no nothing. If the guy doesn't want to be involved in it, then he should be able to just to disconnect and be and be gone with it. Uh, <laughs> and his his point, and that's that's really bad. Obviously, that's really really bad. Right, uh, it, but it's, he's trying. He's putting out the juxtaposition, and it's like the, it's exactly. it's the it's the okay. If I don't have any say in this, then you don't have any say in this. So, you you got to pick and choose what you want because you can't have both. Can't have the cake and eat it yeah. too. Um, so Arlington exactly. Axis also says uh, a little bit earlier, uh, tactical pineapple. After the last election, how can we trust our vote even matters or counts anymore? The fraud was blatantly ignored. No armaments and axes. It was fortified. Yes, yes, you saw that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It wasn't. It wasn't fraud. They blatantly come out and it said was it. Fortified. Holy cow! They. Fortified. These people are so fucking arrogant that they can't even say, "Hey, look, we did this," and and not actually come out and actually say, "Hey, look, we did this." But it wasn't fraud. We only fortified it. We just got together with the unions and, and with these individuals and put it out there and said, hey, look, um, we as the unions believe that the election needs to change. We need to protect our businesses from any further rioting because we can't have Trump in office anymore because Trump is the reason for the rioting. So we're going to fortify the election for Joseph Biden. And look, it's going to be perfect. Nobody's going to riot. Nobody's going to have any issue in the first couple weeks after because we all know Trump supporters aren't violent people. But hey, we're going to also throw that false flag out there that uh, they're they're violent people so we can prosecute, persecute, and imprison them because 
being a Trump supporter means that you're a violent, racist, fucking bigot and homophobic uh, terrorist, and you now need to be dealt with. But yeah, so I just dropped that time article, a Time Magazine article, into the chat room. If you guys have not read that, take some time. Go ahead and bring it up so it pops up into another tab or whatever, and just save that for later. Take some time to read it. If, if it's too much, go over and watch Tim Pool. Tim Pool did a, a a video breakdown about this, and the brazen, like, just like opinion that they just they just threw it all out there in the open. It's like, yep, yeah, they totally did it, and they just changed the wording behind it. It's just unbelievable, unbelievable. I can't believe it. So it actually won't post the link for you. Just give me one second. Oh, it won't. Oh, my goodness. You can do it now. I, wanna... I, I made you a moderator in my chat, so now you can post the link. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> There's not, now you can also delete people whose comments you don't like. So uh, don't ah. don't abuse it or I will fucking rule you. <laughs> ah, no. I don't do that. I don't do it. There's, there, I, I can tell you, I probably can count on... I can probably count on one hand how many comments I've deleted from my videos. All of the videos that I've put out, I've put out close to 300 videos. I can count on one hand how many how many comments that I've actually deleted, and that, that was because they were something like, you know, at the time when I was married, they're like, "Oh, your freaking wife's a whatever because she's in the military." So, um, well, that's okay. You're, it, it's okay. Your wife can be whatever. You're still a Jody. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> what I was, I guess. <laughs> but, but anyways, our movements and access does say, uh, tactical pineapple. So how does our vote even matter anymore? This country is screwed. If things don't change. I, I think that unfortunately we're at a position where we need to do things to prevent our vote from not mattering. Um, we, we all know that, things could be one way or the other i'm not saying and and here's an unpopular opinion okay so do i think that voter fraud occurred absolutely do i think it was widespread absolutely do i think it was enough to actually sway the vote from one side to the other i don't really know and this is the thing we don't really know because we don't know how bad it really was um there were a lot of things that happened that made things look worse than they were. Um, there were a lot of things that happened that may have been as bad as they really looked, but we don't really know. So we can sit here and we can piss and moan and we can we can whine and complain about it, or we can actually get out and do something. So this is one place where the left and I'm going to use the left as, in quotations, um, has done way better than a lot of people on the right have done. They've been engaged civically. Mm-hmm. So um, they get out, they protest, they put things out there, they say enough's enough, and they're they're willing to lose everything they have to promote their political agenda. I'm not saying that we as the the right or the conservative or the libertarian or whatever need to put out and lose everything. What I am saying is we need to actually stop going, well, we'll take care of it at the ballot box. Well, because guess what? If you wait till the ballot box, you waited about three to six months too late. So we need to get out early. We need to get out often. And we need to actually fucking do something before the ballot. And and this is we we are failures at this. We've been doing this for years, the same as we always do it. Um, all right, right here. So, um, you see that logo right there? Uh, I used to affiliate pretty heavily with. Eh, we we'll go this way. Left is right. Right is left. <laughs> Um, I used to affiliate pretty heavily with the three percenters. Uh, I still do. I webmaster some three percenters websites, do all that stuff. Um, I still align pretty closely with them, but I'm going to say this, uh, the majority of them are keyboard warriors. Um, the majority of the people on the right are keyboard warriors, uh, regardless of how they believe they are 
not keyboard warriors. They're they're out. They're gonna do something. No, you sit behind your fucking keyboard and you don't do shit because you're afraid that if you do something, you're gonna lose your job, which is a valid concern. We all have that same concern, but we don't do anything about it. So, <laughs> sorry, but the left is beating us because they get out and do shit. Hmm? So, if you, wanna, right. if you want to beat them, here, here's get out a, and do it. Here's a, here, here's a prime example, just in my home state, right? So, I, I live, for those of you who don't know, I live in the free state we are known as the free state Kansas, right? Uh, we fought our own civil war to be a free state. So that's why we call it that. But in, uh, let's see, 2016, yeah, 2016, um, we elected a Democratic governor. In that election, there's 105 counties in the state of Kansas five of those counties basically elected our governor out of 105 counties only five of them was able to get a democratic governor into the um into the gubernatorial mansion i guess if you want to call it um this last year in the election uh our state went red but Joe Biden only lost the state by 100,000 votes. That seems like a lot, but it's really not. It's really not a lot because of those five counties, of those same five counties that elected a Democratic governor, those five counties was able to pull that margin uh, for Joe Biden closer than it had, should have ever been. Uh, in two, 2016, I think the margin was something like 200,000 votes or something like that uh, for Trump. But all of a sudden in 2020, it's only 100,000 votes. So, I mean, we have to be very, very strategic in what we're trying to do at the local level. Well, Ins ensuring that we're actually voting people in to represent us. And we've talked about it. You've said it time and time again already on this live chat, but time and time again, we have to vote our values into, into office. And if we're not doing that, if we're just voting because of there's a, a D or an R next to the name, then we're doing ourselves an injustice. Right. hundred um, percent. One thing too, that, that people need to realize is that, um, voter turnout is what Republicans typically have relied upon for a long time. So, um, believe it or not, people who are conservative tend to be more civically minded and tend to get out and actually, you know, use their right to vote. Now mm -hmm. that, you know, we control the, like people who are conservative, people who are libertarian typically control the rural areas. That's not a doubt. Nobody doubts that. Everybody knows that happens. Like, even in the states where all this voter fraud specifically was supposed to take place, none of it showed up in any of the, the rural areas, which is what leads me to believe that maybe there was less voter fraud than what people want to believe. Mm -hmm. um, if rural counties were all of a sudden blue, and they haven't been blue for fucking 60 years then maybe eh, maybe there's a little bit more voter fraud than what we would like to agree with. Um, it all happened in counties that are 100% blue that typically have 30 to 45% voter turnout. They had 100% voter turnout because the media did a great fucking job of saying, you know what, if you don't get out and vote, you're going to be stuck with Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. people, no, voted, absolutely right. people voted against Trump because regardless of whether they liked Biden or not, because they just didn't like Trump because mm -hmm. for four years, there was a, a committee to subjugate the election against the person that they didn't want in office. And it's really and easy. The, the cities and urban centers of most states are large enough to actually overcome the vote of the rural areas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's very interesting, too, because if you were to ask an individual uh, why they voted for Biden, 
they they can't give you a really good reason other than uh, they were better than Trump. You know, they they, they weren't Trump, uh, right. and that's something that I've uh, <laughs> that's something that I've heard time and time again, and that is like one of the most irresponsible answers I've ever, ever, ever heard. Or the other aspect is, well, I didn't vote. Well, here's the and, thing though, that, that whole, that whole thing that that's exactly four years ago. Oh yeah. How did oh, we yeah. get Trump mm-hmm. in office? <laughs> he was better than Hillary. Well, what yeah, the fuck yeah, are you talking not. about? Like, yes. Okay. Trump got in office because Trump wasn't a politician. He he was a better option than Hillary, obviously. I mean, I mean it's like you could run a potato against Hillary. It's a better option. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is he wasn't a politician, and the people were pissed off. And that's how Trump got in office. Trump didn't stay in office because the people who ran the government were sick and tired of somebody who didn't wasn't government in the government. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they yeah. did everything in their power to push and and get rid of him, no matter what. Whether it was fortifying the election or... I saw the article, I still say, most likely all they really did was made sure that people showed up. Was it pushing the line of legality? Probably. Was there voter fraud? Absolutely. Um, nobody's denying that either. <laughs> they they started off by denying it and then they're like oh there's proof of voter fraud okay so there was voter fraud but it wasn't widespread well then there was proof of widespread voter fraud and they're like okay well it was widespread voter fraud but it wasn't enough to change the election mm. well see and the problem is the left the left is really good about tweaking words to fit their agenda a little bit better where we're not we keep on saying a we keep on saying voter fraud exactly it's not voter fraud necessarily because there's no way to prove that if you say fraud you have to have all of a sudden yep it's it's a legality issue you have to have proof of that otherwise it doesn't exist right so if you say irregularity if you would if if the if if uh if trump's lawyers would have pressed irregularities and say hey we need to look at these irregularities because they bashed him over the head for what three years because of russia 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 <laughs> you know and, and it's funny because i talked to those same people that were always like oh russia russia was good you know you know the, we got the we got the ig's report it's coming out in freaking oh it's going to show it's going to show we've got we've got trump it's going to show it and then all of a sudden it didn't and they're like oh you know. but russia but russia now when you bring up 2020 and you say the irregularities are like oh no no, no. Your, your guy just lost you just need to you just need to be done with it you just gotta you, accept just it. give it up no Biden, i'm like wait Biden's so, your president you're gonna have to just accept it right so wait a second you questioned trump for three and a half years about about russia gate but now when we question your guy about something oh no 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 you're just a conspiracy theorist <laughs> right you, you're queuing on you know i'm like oh, oh fuck queuing on yep i'm wearing a fucking buffalo headdress into the capitol i'm queuing on <laughs> there's a fucking how's the plan working out for you fucking asshats i'm just asking how's the plan <laughs> <laughs> anyways Away from politics a little bit. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, so um, somebody in the chat says, oh, Biden, LOL. Uh, I think you made a f- faux pas there in the way you spoke. One day. You, you said, oh, Biden. You were going to say Obama, but you changed it to Biden. You got it. Good. Um, I, I was kind of reading it like it was like Obi-Wan Kenobi type of thing. I just went straight Star Wars when I saw that. I don't know why. Okay, so, <laughs> so Star Star Wars. Um Original series, prequel or trilogy? The, the 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 final ones. Which are better? Okay, you can't see it, but let's see if I can get my finger right there. That 
is a DVD. That's a three DVD, three Blu-ray set of the despecialized Star Wars version. So the original series, as it was aired in 77, was it 77, 80, and 83? Um, without the add-ons from 97. That is my, that's my go-to. Uh, the um, Empire Strikes Back is my absolute favorite. And then if I had to bring in a new uh, movie into my favorite, it would have to be Rogue One, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm freaking, I don't know what it is about Rogue One. I absolutely love that movie. So. Okay. Uh, you? Uh, original three. It, it, there, there's no way. I mean, the prequels garbage. Uh, the if I and and if I'm being honest, the last movies, as far as canon, suck. Entertainment oh, yeah. value high. <laughs> I think I think the last movies on their own are are entertaining. I don't think they they belong to the series. I think they are on their own. And people, <laughs> all right. And while I'm being sexy, he says, "But do you have the Christmas special?" Do not. But I have. I have set through that garbage. And oh, what is it? Life Day is that what it's called? Life Day. Okay. They talk about that, and there's a reference to that in Mandalorian in the first episode of Mandalorian. Uh, they they reference that, um, but uh, there is man. I wish I could remember his name. Boba Fett but there doesn't is... exist without the winter without the Christmas special. So, Christmas special has to have a little bit of something because it is the original canon to the Christmas story or the Christmas special. Now it it is the Christmas special because it was originally just a special for TV. Um, it became the Christmas story. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, there is a guy that I subscribe to on YouTube who uh, he dives deep into um, the rumor mill with Star Wars. And they are talking about basically canceling the episodes, what, seven, eight, and nine? They're talking about canceling those three. Oh, look at that. My uh, my mood lighting went out. Um, I'm trying to find this guy's channel because I want you guys to check this guy out. He's hilarious. But he's talking about how Kathleen Kennedy is slowly and surely getting pushed out. And eh, Overlord DVD is his channel's name. And um, he's a great YouTube channel. He He's able to get late leaked information from a number of different sources from Disney. Um, so if you guys haven't checked this guy out, uh, check him out. If you're big wars or star Trek or anything, sci-fi uh, he, he's a really fun channel and he dives deep into um, uh, a lot of rumor mill when it comes to star Wars stuff. And um, here recently they've been talking about, how um, they're trying to find a way to basically cancel episode seven, eight, and nine and recreate it. So it's pretty interesting how they're going about it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they take a lot of things with Disney at the helm now. Um, I, they're trying to push a lot of family friendly stuff and, and 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 I will give Disney a little bit of credit. They've been fairly open with the Mandalorian, which has been good. I'm curious to see where that goes. I have a feeling that a lot of people I, I agree with a lot of people that the next you know season of the Mandalorian is gonna go into the 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 Boba Fett the Boba Fett Diaries or the Boba Fett journal um a little bit. Um, I don't know. That's supposed to be a separate. That's supposed to be a separate series. It's supposed to be, but I have a feeling I don't they're going to try to tie it together. Yeah, there, there's as of right now, there's no news as to what's going on with that 
there's no news as to an, a season three of Mandalorian, but they have talked about what do they call it? The, the FET diaries or the FET chronicles or whatever they called it. That was that little teaser at the end of season two of Mandalorian. Yep. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. If it does. Um, I, I think they're going to have, as Disney is going to do, they're going to resurrect, uh, they're going to have to resurrect the Mandalorian, keep it going, uh, in some way, shape or form. Um, it, and, and I've talked to other people about it and there's a lot of people who are saying that they're going to transition it into the, um, baby Yoda, the Grogu saga. I mean, a lot of people okay. are, are obsessed into that. And, and if you think about Disney and marketing, it is a very marketable character to grow now grogu grows in to a little bit older age and and whatever but it's a possibility <laughs> so so yeah it fit Oper- uh operator <laughs> you go ahead i was gonna say uh operator tony has asked me about uh cobra kai i made it through like halfway through season two and i just had to quit it, it just ended up being way too cheesy for me i mean it was nice for the nostalgia but eventually i'm just like oh, okay come on i'm just i'm just over it so <laughs> i i feel like cobra kai decided to go straight um you know what what's his name uh the shit you shared a post from from brandon herrera with with him uh sensei ken or whatever master ken yeah yeah master ken it, they totally went that route with that fucking series like trying to be too over the top and just like ugh. it was like 1980s you, fucking fud lore movie all over again I tell you what if 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 cobra kai was able to work in restomp the draw restomp the groin into their into their freaking script somehow i'd be in it 100 percent <laughs> no, no, big fun i wasn't shit talking master ken at all um i can appreciate the comedy um, I'm just saying Cobra Kai went from being a serious, like extension of the, you know, the karate kid movies to being, uh, it just got comical. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Um, there was some aspects of it. I was just like, okay, this is, this is, I'm not cool with this anymore. I have, I had, I, 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 I sat there and. I was having fun. I, honestly, I was having fun, but then I was just like, there are other things that I need to concentrate on than this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that, to be honest, for most television and most anything that that's, that's the truth for all of it. Um, me, I'm a fat piece of shit. I need to work on that. So, uh, that's that's my goal. I, I'm just I'm just like subjugating myself to that now because I need to do something about it. A hundred percent. Like it's it's been enough. It's been a long enough time. And and I, I personally, um, I'm gonna actually start something here in the, in the near future that to kind of chronicle what I'm gonna go through and what I'm gonna do. But it isn't gonna be fun. It isn't gonna be special. It isn't gonna be whatever but it's it's more or less like if i can do it anybody can do it and and we need to stop being fat pieces of shit in this country and and get out and do something about it legit yeah Mm -hmm. um i want to see if i can find uh there was a video clip that i was sent by a good friend of mine that was a uh was a clip from joe rogan and um it was basically no maybe maybe i just stumbled it on on its on my own but it was uh, a clip where joe rogan was talking to a guy who um basically broke down the whole aspect of why people are dying from the covid uh virus uh from the coronavirus and um man i want to find this guy's name because you guys should take the time and watch this video. If I can find it, I'll let you guys know. But uh, it was extremely interesting in the fact that it talks about how and why they are um, basically chalking everybody up to a COVID death. 
regardless if they died because of COVID or with COVID. And so it's a discussion uh, based on that. It's a discussion on comorbidity rating and, and, and how, how an individual who has COVID and dies due to complications of COVID. Um, I, I, I haven't seen the article, but it just, knowing Joe Rogan, knowing the discussion, knowing the people he's talked to, this is, this is the way it goes. Um, individuals who have underlying conditions such as obesity, heart disease, um, vascular disease, anything like that. Uh, anytime you experience a viral interaction, it's going to be devastating to your body. That being said, you're going to go through issues and have complications that other individuals who may not have so those health conditions um not necessarily are going to have not necessarily going to see now if you die from the disease or you die from complications of the disease they're going to label you as died from covid because if it wasn't for the comorbidity of the covid-19 virus you would not have died and that's that's reality <laughs> however i'm going to say this too i have experienced uh, other individuals getting COVID-19 who are highly healthy. And from what I've found is the reality of it is, is that although I don't know anybody who's personally died from COVID, I know an individual who was labeled as died from COVID. Um, sure. It had nothing to do with the guardrail that went through his head at 90 miles an hour, but um, I don't know anybody who's died from COVID due to comorbidity. Um, but I do know individuals who have been diagnosed with COVID who experienced extreme circumstances, extreme conditions. And um, to this day, they have health complications from it. Uh, an individual who's extremely healthy um, uh, was you know, a runner, extremely fit person um, to this day cannot run and is constantly coughing up blood, even though they've, been without the virus for six months so it's it's post issues that they're dealing with um and then there's me i'm (laughs) not even going to sugarcoat it i am i'm bigger than most people believe um but i'm 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 at about 420 pounds i'm a large dude heavy set but i Mm -hmm. get around i do a lot of weightlifting i was i was offensive and defensive line football Um, so naturally built bigger. Uh, I still to this day can squat probably 680 pounds, bench press 400 pounds. I'm not a little dude when it comes to weightlifting. Um, but I also carry a lot of fucking weight and, and Mm -hmm. it's not getting any smaller, which is why I need to get back into something like boxing, something into cardio. I hate cardio workouts, but boxing has always been fun. And that's why I say that. But, um, the reality is, is, Individuals who are healthier tend to feel and are in tune with their body more than people who are not. So an individual who is of poor health may not realize that they have these symptoms from the coronavirus or other things that they're dealing with because they are unhealthy to begin with. So when a person is healthier, when they are more fit, they're more in tune with their body. So the smallest detraction of health seems much greater while they're going through it. Absolutely. You know, and it's, it's interesting. You know, you, you talk about, you know, that you're a bigger dude and um, you know, yet you can still, you probably can still bench more than me. You could squat more than me. And it's interesting what we place visual cue as to what healthy looks like, you know? Um, you got people who would look at, you know, uh, Christian Bale when he was at his peak performance in the Batman series, you know, and his, how ripped he was and everything. Um, but who's to say that he was healthy because when he took the Batman role, what in what I think it was probably 2005, 2006, I think it was 2006 when he took the first Batman movie. If you would have reversed back a year he did a movie called the machinist where he was like deathly Real sick. Thing. Yep. Deathly. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. Cancer and his body sick. has gone through so much transition that he, he may look healthy and strong, but he's probably not. His kidneys are probably pretty right. jacked up. 
Well, and and this is like this is a huge thing that that people constantly, um, they they put visual cues on healthy. That's not healthy. Like there are individuals who are out here, and they're like, wh- what I what I constantly see too is like people judging individuals who are, you know, you look at like a guy like Robert O'Burst. Robert o- Robert O'Burst is a large fucking gentleman. I say that because he could whoop my ass. So, but um, if you, by general standards, a lot of people will look at him and say, "Dude, he's fat." He is so physically fit and so primed to endure that it's unbelievable. But he is built in another way. Whereas I've got individuals that I've worked with in the past who are real skinny i mean they look like they're cut this and that but it's like dude you eat fucking mcdonald's 12 fucking times every two weeks that's disgusting like i haven't touched mcdonald's in like seven years i just cook good food apparently (laughs) but (laughs) Uh, i I love their fries i can't do it i can't even touch it but i work there though i've seen it i've processed it um yeah, uh, you know, it, in you know, seven one five tactile says, "What about endurance, though?" Um, yeah, the, the question is, what does your endurance need to do? It depends for each you know, individual you, person. Like, what are you exactly. training for? What do you want? What do you want to get out of it? I'm never gonna run a marathon. I don't care how skinny I get, what percentage of body fat I get. Um, I was, um. Well, when I worked construction and played football and did all this other stuff, I, I was still 260 pounds. I was, you know, 12% body fat, which it sounds like a lot, but for a guy that, that size, it's not. It's not a lot. No. Um, I, was carry, I was carrying around 260 pounds, but I didn't look it. Um, so... That- so a great a great example, if you guys were to go onto my IG page and scroll back to March of 2019, I cut 33 pounds to fight in a kickboxing, an amateur kickboxing fight. And even at cutting 33 pounds and probably being as, as cut as I had been in a very, very long time, um, I was actually at my basic training weight from 19 years before. Um, 19 years to the day um, was still at 20% body fat. So, yeah. Right. So it, and that's, it, it's crazy to think about, but it's like, it really is like everybody's built differently and, and you can't look at somebody and say, because of how he looks, he's healthy or because of how he looks, he's fit or whatever. Um, hell, you can look at, look at Matt, uh, you know, demolition Matt. You know, he's bulking right now, right? I don't think there's anybody who would think that he's not a physically fit individual. He's doing what he needs to do to put on more muscle. So he's bulking up so he can put on muscle. Um, he's still physically fit. And Herrera is doing the same thing. Right. I don't necessarily he's think he was Brandon bulking Herrera. on purpose. But he's now getting, he's I, he's doing his work and he's getting he's getting cleaned up. So I, I think if you look at Brandon Herrera two years ago to Brandon Herrera now, you would look at him and it's like, dude's fat. I don't think he's fat. I think I think he knows exactly what he's doing because he's closely tied in with uh, Demolition Matt and and those guys. So I think that they're all between him, uh, Donut Operator, and um, and and Brandon Herrera. I think all three of those guys are trying to do the same thing. And it's very possible. I I do think I do think that. Uh... I think Brandon may have lost a little, uh, put a little bit of that on accidentally, but that, you know, dirty bulking is dirty bulking, whether you accidentally do it or not. So, um, Brandon, from when he started his channel, he was a chunkier dude. Brandon got fit. Brandon lost a lot of weight, got fit, but didn't bulk up, didn't put a lot of muscle on. So he just lost the weight. He did a lot of cardio stuff, got into that. And now, now he's, if you look at him, even fuck from a month and a half ago, um, to now, I mean, you can just see it in his shirts, his arms, like 
He's at the mm -hmm. gym again. He's doing work. He's putting in work to drive them muscles up a little bit. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's and not it's interesting fuel. you bring it's that up fat. because it's fuel I, for I the just, love machine. Uh, Last week, I went to the gym and got to see my trainer. He's been out with um, with a knee injury for, man, almost a year now. <clears throat> so last week, I got to train with him for the first time. And he looked at me. He's like, Mark, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, what are you talking about? I'm freaking gaining weight is what I'm doing. And he's like, no, no, no. Your shoulders are so much more bulkier than they were the last time I saw you. You're, you're doing something. And I'm like... Okay. I, I don't see it. I don't see that type of stuff because I right. obviously live in my body, you know? Right. And that's the other thing too, is a lot of people don't realize like you will not see the change of your body, whether it's good or bad. It comes down to other people saying it. And unfortunately today we live in a society where not enough people are willing to say the bad portion of it. Um, they're willing to say, Oh my God, it looks like you've lost like 10 pounds. Like you're looking good. And then I get to tell him like, no, actually I gained 15, but thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing with me is I carry my weight very well. Uh, I'm walking around at like 190 and I'm five foot seven. So that's a lot of weight. Uh, I, I really need to scale down and I've been working on scaling down for quite some time, but, um, you know, ice cream is just really good, <laughs> you know, and I know, you know, kind of going back, um, going back to what uh, 715 Tactical was saying, you know, when it comes to endurance, you know, what does your endurance need to do? I know for me, I need to protect my daughter with every inch of my life. And whatever that takes is what I'm going to do. So that's why I don't concentrate on lifting heavy weights. I, I don't lift heavy. Um, I lift hardly any weight whatsoever. Most of my workouts are high intensity interval training or what they call a hit training. And it is, you know, it is high intensity, obviously, and it's minimal weight. It's a lot of body weight type of stuff. And then the gym that I go to, it's called nine round. It's a lot of boxing, kickboxing type of, uh, orientated workouts. So, uh, I get, I get the opportunity to, you know, work on bag stuff. I get an opportunity to work with a trainer and it is 30 minutes of full on, go, go, go as hard as I possibly can. Sometimes I, sometimes I sandbag it a little bit and I just kind of, you know, coach the daughter. Other times I go as hard as I possibly can. And, um, my goal and my workouts is to hit a 500 calorie workout. And if I don't do that, then I failed. I try again tomorrow. Um, and that's my, that's my focus. That's my drive. That's my, that's the avenue that I drive down to, because I know that that's going to put me in a better position to be able to pick up my daughter and run with her if I need to, right. or, right. you know, be able to pick up my daughter and fire my CCW single handedly or whatever the scenario may be. Right. I know that I'm prepared to do that. Now, if you're worried about having to pick up a 250 pound person and carry them, then you need. So it's all, it's all specific based. You all have to look at what you want your body to do. And then you need to orientate your exercises, your workouts in that manner whether it be, you know, lifting heavy a couple times of the week and then doing cardio or high intensity interval trainings the other times, mix it up. It, it, it's up to you. The, you know, realistically, the right. sky is the limit on what you want to do, right. but you need to realize what do you want your body to do and be prepared to execute it at that point. Right. Yeah. Armaments and Axis says minimal weight and many reps is better. And, and I'll just say that depends on who you are and what you want to do. So um, if you want to elongate your muscles, create more flexibility, and you want to actually just lean it out, sure, that's great. Um, if you want to be able to increase your, your weight-bearing capacity, increase your bulk size, then, then you got to go bigger. Um, there's not a one-size-fits-all routine for anybody, and there's not a one-size-fits-all diet for anybody. And um, 
as an individual who's just starting this journey and trying to figure out where I'm going to go, I'm going to actually suggest something for individuals. It's something out there called a bod pod. Um, they call it different things, but there's something they can put you in. They scan your body and they tell you what macros and micros you need for your body type to change your diet to be effective. And then you can talk to your trainer about what you want to accomplish and what you want to achieve physically. And that's how you determine your weight training. Um, your diet is only a portion of it. Your physicality is another portion of it. And, and, and those two can't be determined by a single thing. Like you have to determine both of those separate. Um, there is a, a science to body type and what your genetic, you know, makeup is able to do. Um, it's, it's really about creating and finding a balance. And some individuals can find it better than others. Some individuals have to go out and search for it. Um, my goal really and the whole reason that I want to do anything to get better isn't even about myself because I couldn't care less about myself as far as individually. Um, at this point, I live for my kids and I need to be around for my kids for a long time. So that's why I'm pushing myself to now do better than what I have been and, and actually do something about it. Um, so that that's where I am now. I, I, I have bad knees, uh, separated my knees, destroyed a kneecap in football. Um, that's what happens when you come off a line late uh, as a defensive lineman. You get bowled over and, and toppled on and shit gets separated in directions they're not meant to go, especially when you got legs that are designed to – to lift 750 pounds at, at my, at my best squat level. I was a 750 pound squat and I was a 390 pound bench. So, um, I'm not built for flexibility. So when my knee goes, it, things go. And when they come back together, things get damaged. So, no, I totally get that. Uh, you know, uh, I, with my little rant that I have, I know that uh, I've talked to James Jaeger and, and he completely disagrees with my position because he's like, you know, hey, that's fine. You want to run marathons or you want to have a lot of endurance. That's fine. But throw a hundred pound pack on your back and then walk 20 miles and tell me how well you're going to do. And that's kind of that's the whole point of what you were talking about before is it's, it's specific to you and what you want is, do you want to be able to carry a 20, you know, a hundred pound pack for 20 miles, or do you want to be able to run 26.2 miles? Right. It's, it's going to be one or the other. You're not going to be able to do both. I know very few people that can do both. Yeah. Unless you're not David the, Goggins, you're not doing both. That, uh, there's a, there's a dude that I follow on Instagram. Um, he, he goes by the name of taco Mark. And, uh, he's, he's actually stationed out here at Fort Riley, uh, really cool dude. Uh, he, he's, um, he's an infantry guy in the army. Um, he, um, he makes, um, holsters. He makes Kydex holsters on the side as well. And, uh, does competition shooting as, and he's the only dude that I know that could, uh, outlift me and run a marathon at the same time. Oh. Yeah, I mean, and then they exist, and that's what they want. Oh, yeah, They're training for that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not, I'm obviously not in any position to lecture anybody about training. Uh, you know, neither am I. But, but if you want to do anything, just just get with get with a personal trainer who's going to fit into your needs, uh, what you actually want to accomplish, and then. Um, also talk to a nutritionist about your body type, your genetic type, whatever you need to do to, to find out what macros and micros work with you. Uh, a lot of people suffer from inflammation more than they suffer from fatness. So, um, you know, I carry a lot of water weight. I drink, I drink 96 ounces of water a day, um, and don't work off 96 ounces of water. So it all has to go somewhere. No, not all of it. Not all of it comes out in your urine. Yeah. So no. <laughs> your lymph nodes process a lot of it, and you end up getting uh, uh, indentions in your legs because of it. And it's called uh, lymphedema. So, yeah, absolutely. Anyways, uh, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, you know, we talked. This is about an hour show. We're going two hours and fifteen minutes at this point. 
which is a great and great. It's gone. It's gone so fast. <laughs> it has. Um, yeah, drink half of your body weight in ounces of water per day. Seven one five tactical says. I agree with that. Um, however, there is a limit. <laughs> Tito's. Uh, there is a limit to that. So when you weigh four hundred and twenty pounds, two hundred and forty ounces of water a day, I want to see anybody fucking drink that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I drink. I I have a fifty six ounce or fifty two ounce Bubba cup at work. I drink two of those typically during a day um of water and that's on top of the pot and a half of coffee that i drink um black because no no sugar but it, it it's it is the way it is so you gotta you gotta balance somewhere and somehow and and then of course there's whiskey um in my case i don't drink vodka vodka is for the wife uh, i say vodka is for people who don't have genitals um <laughs> Well, typically, I give a lot I'm, of a, I'm a whiskey drinker. I'm sitting here looking in my in my mud room, right, just right over here, and I'm I'm looking at all bottles of whiskey that I've drinking, from yeah, Basil yeah. Hayden to Horse Soldier to McClellan Double Barrel to Uncle Nearest uh, to Angel's Envy to 1910. So, yeah. Had any monkey sh- monkey shoulder lately? Oh, not lately, but uh, that's good stuff. That I was very surprised at how good that was. Not bad for a thirty-five dollar bottle of scotch. Oh, it's it's really good. Yeah, so. I have to I have to say thanks to my my um, my BFF uh, Shocker Shooter. Uh, he he uh, he turned that on uh, to me, and 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 I haven't had it lately because I right now I'm I'm drinking Angel's Envy, uh, which is just ridiculously good but it's it's pretty expensive too i think unfortunately for me one thing that i gotta stop is drinking um in order to take myself to the next level so we'll see how we'll see how adding more exercise in goes and then it may be maybe uh on 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 booze for a little while um you'll never catch me drinking a fucking seltzer so it's just gonna be water so um to all those people out there who drink fucking um what i like to call um uh Lesbian water, lesbian vagina water, um, aka uh, white claw. Um, <laughs> Lacroix, Lacroix is not bad. Like I can handle Lacroix. Uh, I actually don't mind bubbly either. Um, but I'm not drinking a hard seltzer. That you know. Now they've got the Michelob uh, natural one. Yeah, not happening. <laughs> I'll just not do it. So. Um, with that, I, I will, yeah. I will say, um, I, I, I'm going to cut it short. Um, as seven, one, five tactical said, you must piss all the time or every 10 minutes. No, it's, it's about every two and a half to three hours. I'm there now. So I'm, I'm going to start bouncing my well, knee and you guys are going to start hearing my mic. Go, dun, 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 dun. Well, can, can we, uh, can we just take like just a couple of minutes to clear the air on something? Sure. Absolutely. So it would seem that I got called out uh, in one of your last um, last uh, live chats. Yeah, and um, and um, I've wrestled on how to talk about this um, because um, I'm not the type of person that talks bad about other people. I mean, do I troll other people? Yeah, I do. But it's always in 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 good heartedness and everything. So uh, just real quick, uh, you had a guest on. I guess it almost a, two months ago at this point, right? Yeah, it's been a little while. Yeah, I think it was two months ago. Anyway, and um, some disparaging things were said about me, and and I and I. Um, I have to say that um, first off, I wish nothing but the best for the for them. Um, I, I think that uh, what they're doing for the gun industry, uh, for the gun community, is admirable. I, I, I think that what they're hoping to try to accomplish in so many different aspects is extremely needed. I, I think that some of the things that are being said which may be very harsh to some people's ears need to um, need to be heard on uh, certain aspects of it. But, um, but unfortunately they they're upset because I block 
them from social media. And I block them from social media uh, because of not what was said or anything like that. It ended up being a, um, a breach of trust from, from my perspective. And basically what has happened is, uh, is so much like internet drama. It's pretty ridiculous, but I ended up liking a meme from a meme page on Instagram, just like the meme. And, um, that meme had to do with domestic violence. And, um, unfortunately that not, I shouldn't say unfortunately, not unfortunately, but that person is, uh, very much about, you know, supporting, um, domestic violence survivors and, and that's admirable and everything, but I already knew the context of what was going on with the, the meme. I liked it. That's all I did. I just hit like, because comedy, regardless if you see it or not, comedy is supposed to be controversial, edgy, and still yet be funny at the same time. So when I saw this meme, I was like, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I see the humor in that. And that was the end of it. And all of a sudden I got, I got a, uh, a direct message, a DM, you know, basically kind of, kind of berating me about uh, me liking that meme. So what this person had to say pretty much is true in the fact that, yeah, I like the meme. Um, was it in poor taste? Maybe. I don't know. But it was funny to me at the time. So I liked it. And when I was told that I should basically apologize for liking it, I didn't back down. And I basically said, you know, this is this is how I see things. This is what I um, this is how I look at it. And that's this, this the bottom line of it. The point that kind of started tipping me one direction is the point when they brought my daughter into the argument. And um, my perspective is if you need to bring my daughter or my family members into an argument, you don't have a very good argument to begin with. If you need to, to, to go to that level, that's just, that's just that aspect of it. I just kind of the way I see it. Um, but I was still fine with it. I was just like, okay, you know, you want to do that? I just said, Hey, don't bring my daughter into the argument. She has nothing to do with this. Um, and I left it alone. Um, about an hour after this discussion had concluded, I got a, another DM from an, another person who I had no, no connection with, didn't even know who this person was and said, Hey, is this you? And was pointing to a um, a a uh, a post from the same person from from the person I had been in an argument with, and um, said, "Yeah, yeah, that's me." Uh, and they're like, "Okay, well, they they just posted your your DM online." So um, that's if anyone is curious, um, that's that's bottom line of it. Uh, what they said was true. Yeah, um, I blocked them. Um, if you want to call me a bitch or a pussy or whatever, um, that's fine. Um, but uh, that's their pr prerogative. That's their position on it. The moment that you bring my daughter into an argument and the moment that you breach my trust and you take our private conversation and put it online, that's that's the end for me. I... I, I if you want to have an argument, that's fine. We can have a discussion and we can argue and I can be perfectly fine with it. I can disagree and still be okay with you. And you can disagree with me and I can still be okay with you. But uh, the moment that you take our private conversations and post it online, done. So that's, uh, I just wanted to clear the air and get my side of the story on it and just be done with it. And I'm glad you did. I'm glad all. you did because it's like, I asked, I asked you your side of the story because I'm like, I'm not a person who's going to take one side of a story and go, wow, look at that. Totally, totally yeah. pitch move. I'm going to go out and I'm going to ask. And it took a couple of weeks for me to ask, but it's mostly because it's like, I don't spend every waking moment doing this, but it's like, sure. I had to ask because I'm going to clear the air and I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you what your side was. And, and I believe mm -hmm. your side aligned with exactly what she said. And you gave me reasoning to what happened. So that's where exactly I are now. At the end of the day, you know, the people who know me know that I'm I'm 
I'm as, as genuine as a person as I possibly can be. And if I'm at fault, I will admit my fault. I will admit my fault publicly if need be. Um, and if people don't agree with that and they need to remove me from their life, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, but in this situation, I had to uh, unfortunately remove myself from their life because of what I felt was a breach of trust. And you know, I, at the end of the day, the difference between me and that other person is I wish them nothing but the best and, and I hope them well. And I will, and that's just how I am. That's how I'll always be. Right. Um, and, um, yeah, so I just wanted to clear the air because I know it's been out there and regardless if it means anything to anyone, not again, if people know who I am, they, they realize that, um, I, I do whatever I can to be a stand up dude as much as possible. So, um, oh, and that's so we'll leave it at that. That's a hundred percent admiral, admirable. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. pushing the word out there, but, um, no, I appreciate you clearing the air. I appreciate you getting this out there. And I did also, you know, I put that out there that you had an opportunity. I wanted you to, if you wanted to clear the air to do that. And I'm glad you did. Um, individuals who watch my show do watch your channel. And I, I wanted to give you that fair shake too. It's not like I'm, I don't want to have anybody just a single side of a story on my, my channel. So if ever anybody comes on and talks shit toward one side of anybody, I'm going to try to get the other person on just so you're aware of that. So, um, I, I don't care. I'm not trying to start drama, but I do want to hear both sides. And if anybody is ever faulted in any side of a story, I want that other side being heard. So, and, and again, I don't try to, I don't try to involve myself, uh, into drama as well. Um, in, because it, we've got bigger fish to fry than, right. you know, poking each other in the eye. And that's just it. Um, We're all on the same side. We need to stop eating each other and start focusing on the, the actual problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, again, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, their opinion is not going to be changed one bit. Um, and if there's anybody that's watching this, whose opinion was changed of me because of those comments, that's fine too, you know? Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm always free and available. If anyone ever wants to get in touch with me, they, they have, um, have ample opportunity to do that through, through my email or through DM on Instagram or whatever the case may be. So, yeah. So, uh, looks like, uh, we needed to take a break here, which is perfectly fine. Make sure you guys are hitting the thumbs up button on this. It would really help things out. Um, and, oh, wait, wait, no, come here, come here, come here. We've been wanting to say this. So go ahead and say little girl right here wants to say hi, everybody. So go ahead and say hi. You know, there you go right there. So she's now said hi. Then you can go get your snack, right? You're getting water. Water? Awesome. So um hey, uh I really appreciate everybody hanging out for so long. Uh it's been pretty you guys have been uh hanging out with us for man two and a half hours. That is awesome. Um what is L what else is going on? I for those of you who are subscribed to the channel, I was supposed to have a video out today, and unfortunately, I didn't get it out as much as I wanted to. wasn't feeling too good yesterday. I was going to try to get the editing done yesterday. Uh, I was going to try to get the editing done today, but uh, had a lot going on. But uh, at the end of the day, we should have a video out for you this weekend. I just got to get the editing uh, completed and... Uh, Get it out to you guys as quickly as possible. No live chat on Monday because I am going to concentrate on other uh, other projects. So yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, sorry, I had to. I had to go. The that my son woke up and started screaming, so like I had to run. Yeah, real quick. 
I knew it was either that or you had to hit the restroom. One of the two. Oh, I can, I can, I can hold the restroom portion. The son started screaming, and I had to make sure everything was good. Um, Absolutely. He he fell out before I even got to the stairs, so we're good. Anyways, um, it looks like you had baby girl come on. Missed that, but that's all right. Um, definitely. Um, I appreciate you coming on, clearing the air. Um, yeah, thank you. Telling everybody, telling everybody what you want to tell about. Um, Mark holding the show when pineapple was peeing. No, nope, I didn't pee yet. I'm going to go shake that leg in a minute. Um, <laughs> but I do, I do want to say to everybody who came in and stopped by tonight, Charles Sexton, operator, Tony, big fun, Mario mechanic, Molina, AWG armaments and axes, seven, one, five tactical. We got a bunch of you came in. I'm not even going to go all the way back. Cause I try and it sounds stupid because I repeat people like six times, but um, I do appreciate each and every one of you who come by, stop by, hang out in the chat, um, and, and come in and, you know, hang out with us. Um, we're just two, two individuals, two idiots, just having a conversation. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> we have no authority over anything and you guys still choose to come watch us. Um, but, uh, I had a little bit more vodka tonight than I was anticipating, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was able to maintain coherency through this. Visual center has been maintained. We are good. We had good conversation, <laughs> kept it going, didn't go too full fucking Ahab. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to everybody who's still watching, um, you guys are bosses. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, uh, Mark, I appreciate you spending the time here. Um, oh, again, you. we, we do have merchandise. Um, the Boog brand stuff is still up. It's on our Teespring store at store.tacticalpineapple.com. Um, it doesn't have the Boog logo anymore, but it's still there and it's cheap now. Um, so we are at, uh, 1776 for t-shirts. How's that for a price? Very nice. So, oh, they're very nice. <laughs> I think our sweatshirts are twenty four ninety nine. Um, our t shirts are seventeen seventy six. Can't can't beat the price. Um, they're Hanes cotton. They do shrink a little bit by the next size up if you want. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you coming by. I appreciate your time, Mark. And, and on that, um, I will tell everybody in the chat, uh, appreciate what you have while you have it. Um, cause you never know when somebody like me is going to come by and put some pineapple on your fucking pizza. So with that, I uh, stay safe, stay fun, and always keep your mags loaded. You guys later.